legends grow on trees. In the 60s, it was the master of the scramblers, Bob Greasy, who led the Boilermakers to a Rose Bowl victory. Mike Phipps still holds the Purdue school record for touchdown passes in a single game. He threw five of them. Operating out of the wishbone, Gary Danielson once ran for a record 213 yards in one half. Purdue's best quarterback might have been Mark Herman. He won the MVP award in three consecutive bowl games. Second to Herman in career total offense, Scott Campbell tops the list for most yards passing in a single game at 516. In 1985, Jim Everett, averaging 326 yards a game, finished the season as the nation's total offense leader. And last Saturday, a kid named Jeff George stepped in and keeping with the great Purdue quarterback tradition, tossed his first touchdown pass, leading the Boilermakers to victory. In West Lafayette, a new quarterback is blossoming. Network Television presents Super Football Saturday. Today, the Panthers of Pittsburgh take on the Purdue Boilermakers. Brought to you by Buick and your Buick dealers. For comfort, innovation, and a real commitment to quality, it's today's Buicks. Hi, everybody. Along with Ron Kramer, this is Pete Van Weeren welcoming you to ross Aid Stadium in West Lafayette, Indiana, where this afternoon it's the Pitt Panthers and the Purdue Boilermakers. Pitt with a record of no wins, one loss, one tie in the early going. Purdue played their first game last week, and they defeated Ball State. And Ron Kramer, two pretty good football teams here this afternoon. A little bit of an experience advantage for the Pitt Panthers. Purdue is young. They only have five seniors on this football team starting. Young, when I say young, they got a lot of freshmen starting, too, especially at quarterback a guy named Jeff George the number one high school football player of the year last year and he's a good one Pittsburgh on the other hand is good defensively so he's going to have to pinpoint his passes against this Pittsburgh defense the Pitt Panthers can also move the football on offense let's begin with their quarterback John Conjemi now in his third year as a starting quarterback for the Panthers you'll see him here completing a touchdown pass to Reggie Williams a few weeks ago against the University of Maryland that's the only touchdown they scored in that game they lost at 10-7 well he can throw the ball and he finds his opening and there's the touchdown uh, unfortunately Pittsburgh lost 10-7. On the ground, the Panthers can also move the ball. Charles Gladman, an excellent running back. He gained over 1,000 yards last year. You'll see him here scoring a touchdown last week against North Carolina State. He's well on his way to another 1,000-yard-plus season this season. Good balance and runs to daylight right into the end zone. One strength of the Pitt team is their defense. Tony Woods, an All-American hopeful at the defensive end spot. And right alongside him, a guy named Lorenzo Freeman. You'll see him here against the University of Maryland, sacking quarterback Dan Henning, Jr. And Mr. Freeman plans on being in that Purdue backfield a little bit today. They get off the line very quickly, and they're going to have to do that against Jeff George today against Purdue. And when you talk about the Purdue Boilermakers, you really have to begin with their quarterback. They went after the number one ranked quarterback in the entire country in high school last year, based on some polls. A kid named Jeff George out of Warren Central in Indianapolis, Indiana. They got him. Many times you'll get a quarterback like this and redshirt him the first year, but that's not Leon Burtnett's plan. This kid is playing. Well, he certainly can throw the ball. We watched him yesterday. He's got a good arm, and here he is, Jeff George, 1985 High School Player of the Year. You see him here in action in a high school all-star game a year ago here in Indiana. Leon Burtnett says he played a pretty good ball game last week against Ball State for the situation he was in. 23 completions and 40 attempts. He did throw three interceptions, and he's an inexperienced quarterback at the college level. This is going to be something to watch today. He was a little bit nervous last week, but I think he'll come along this week. Not many experienced receivers returning. You saw Rick Bruner, Rod Woodson on defense, an All-American hopeful here at Purdue. And last week against Ball State, Woodson showed another one of his strengths when he returned this kickoff for 97 yards and a Boilermaker touchdown. He's just one of those great athletes, and look at that great speed. In one of our games last year, Woodson ran a punt back for a touchdown, so he's a double threat. He can run back kicks. He's also an excellent defensive back. And don't be surprised if you see him in a different role here this afternoon. Leanne Burtnett may have a few tricks up his sleeve against these Pitt Panthers. Well, we've got a good ball game coming up. We've got a little bit of uh, adverse weather conditions, though, to cope with, Ron. Well, we had a little bit of a rainstorm last night, three and three quarters inch of rain here on this prescription turf. We're going to see how it handles it. And, uh, of course, the field will be wet. 
And so uh, we're going to find out whether we can have this passing game that we're looking for today. The prescription turf, which was uh, adopted right here at Purdue University, is supposed to handle rain very well. <laughs> it's we'll mopping it up well, too. <laughs> we'll find out as the <laughs> afternoon goes on. We'll be back to bring out the teams and have the opening kickoff for you right after this. noise when they take the field. We do not have a sellout today. There were a few tickets remaining this morning and I think the weather kept a few people away and the lightning and the thunder. Huh. Some storm moved through <laughs> here yesterday and here come the Boilermakers winners in their opener last week 20 to 3 over Ball State. And they have that hometown advantage and the home field advantage a little different type of field. This is called prescription work. It really handles the rain well. It looks like it's very dry out there this afternoon. So we should be in for a real great aerial attack. Both these teams like to throw the ball, and I think we'll see a lot of that as the afternoon progresses. Jeff George, the freshman quarterback from Warren Central in Indianapolis. We talked with Leon Burnett yesterday about this kid. And he couldn't say enough good things about him. We'll talk be talking about him as the afternoon progresses. We'll be back for the opening kickoff. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. Degrees. It is overcast here. There is a chance of some showers this afternoon. Mike Gottfried, the new head coach at Pittsburgh, he came over from Kansas. And Leon Burtnett back with the Purdue Boilermakers. Leon Burtnett has four years left in his contract and with a young fellow like Jeff George he could be the franchise right here at Purdue University. It'll be Pitt receiving. What's for a balanced attack today with this with these uh, Pitt Panthers they got a they got a great runner in number 32 Charles Gladman and of course John Cun Jimmy who can really air the ball and completes a lot of them. He had a great year in 1983 as a freshman year uh, here at Pittsburgh. But since then he's sort of gone downhill but he could really come along strong this year starting right here today in West Lafayette. Jonathan Briggs set to kick it off. Keith Tinsley waiting on his own one yard line for the Panthers. And we are underway from Ross Aid Stadium in West Lafayette. Tinsley at the five yard line. to the 31 yard line before he's forced out of bounds. Good run back by Keith Tinsley. Got in a fine field position for these Pitt Panthers. So the Panthers will put it in play first and 10 on their own 31. The quarterback is John Conjemi. Six feet 185 pounds senior out of Lauderdale Lakes Florida. Con Jimmy back to throw and the pass is almost intercepted. It was fielded on the hop by Mark Foster, number 31. Well, Mark Foster just barely trapped it. Con Jimmy looking for his flanker coming in over through the ball. And here are the Pittsburgh uh, backfield and their receivers. Charles Gladman, the key man there in the backfield as far as running the ball. Con Jimmy, of course, does the throwing. And very big but very young up front for the Pittsburgh offensive line. They're in a straight eye formation. Second down and ten. Gladman. That's only about a yard. Did they get the football? I don't think so. He was called down, but I'm impressed with that defense of the Purdue Boilermakers. Kevin Sumlin made the tackle. There's a the defensive sir. look of Purdue. Bill Hitchcock, only a freshman, another of the freshman starters. Very experienced linebackers. All three of those players were Letterman last year. Leon Burton said Wilson. they gathered at the ball, and that's what they did on that last play. And you're going to have to do it in order to stop Charles Gladwin. Third down, nine yards to go for the first down. Three wide receivers in there again for the Panthers. Can Jimmy back to throw on third and long? He's in trouble. He'll try to run for the first down. He won't make it. Ronnie Beeks, number three, the junior from Carson, California. They had a tackle, and the Panthers have to punt. But that defensive line did a good job of rushing Conjemi. He got out of the pocket, and a good tackle by Ronnie Beeks. Downfield, uh, Pittsburgh will have to give up a ball early here in this football game. 
John Rask pays the kick in for the Panthers. Rod Whitson back to receive it. He's standing on his own 20 yard line. And the Panthers took too much time. A new look by the Purdue Boilermakers confused the kicking team of Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh wisely moved their people in because there were 10 people on the line of scrimmage for the Purdue Boilermakers. They moved their people Illegal in, but unfortunately. Delay. Offense, fourth down. Interesting that both of these clubs have freshmen to do the punting. John Rasp, a 6'6 freshman from Irwin, Pennsylvania. There's your officiating crew. It is fourth down. Woodson awaiting the punt from Rasp. Cover at the 25 yard line is out of bounds. Purdue going right after John Rasp. Matt Martin, number 17, will get in there. Great play by Matt Martin. He went right for the ball, right at the end of the toe. A block punt, and that's what they planned to do all the time. He came in very quickly from the right side of your screen, number 17, and Purdue gets a big, quick break here in this football game. So the Boilermakers put the ball in play on the pit 29-yard line. Jeff George, the freshman quarterback from Indianapolis. Lance Scheib in motion. The handoff is to Jerry Cheney. He has no running room at all. It's maybe a loss of a yard on that one. Cheney, a junior college transfer from Compton, California. Lorenzo Freeman made the tackle. And there's Jeff George. Leon Burtnett told us last week Jeff was a little shaky in the first half. In fact, he said he was so nervous he can recall very little <laughs> of the first half against Ball State. Well, I guess it's pretty tough on a young freshman like that. But great things expected the next four years from this kid. Second down and ten. No gain in that last play. In the opening minutes of the first quarter. Shy in motion. George back to throw for the first time. Has protection. The pass is caught by Scheib at the 15-yard line, driven back to the 16. There's the rest of the offense for Purdue. Tony Grant and Jerry Cheney, the running backs. Lance Scheib, Rick Bruner, the wide receivers. And there's a look at the Purdue offensive line. Rick Bruner, number 22, injured on that play. And they can ill afford to, to have any of their line. any of their flankers hurt uh, because they just don't have any this year. Five of them graduated last year, and they've had some injuries. But it looks like Rick Bruner is all right. He went down the field, uh, uh, eye formation, and ran a little turn in in front of the defender. And I'm very impressed with Jeff George because he really stuck it in there. Unfortunately, Rick Bruner was hurt a bit on a nine yard game. You can say two things about the Purdue situation this year. They have a freshman quarterback. They have very few experienced receivers. Look at that good arm. Right Pretty well covered. Money. That was Bruner on the reception. And Darrell Woods on the tackle. A gain of nine yards. It'll be third down and a yard to go for the first down. While this team is very inexperienced right now. The next two or three years, that'll all change for the Boilermakers. Third down and one, two tight ends in there for the Boilermakers. The handoff goes to James Medlock. And Medlock, the junior from Waycross, Georgia, has the first down. We'll take a look at the Pittsburgh defense. Lorenzo Freeman, Tony Woods, two big defensive men. Steve Apke starting at that outside linebacker spot. He had 19 tackles against the Boilermakers last year in a game won by Pittsburgh, 31-30. First down, Boilermakers. They're at the 11-yard line of the Panthers. George back to throw on first down. Eludes some pressure, fires, touchdown! Jeff 
Jeff George certainly didn't look nervous on that play as he eluded one of the defenders, Jerry Olsavsky, and found his receiver in the end zone for a touchdown. And it's Lance Scheib, and it's his first touchdown reception of the year. Here's a try for the extra point. Jonathan Briggs does the place kicking. And he drills it. 11 minutes, 40 seconds remaining in the opening quarter, and the Boilermakers of Purdue have taken a 7-0 lead. Watch a nice little pass pattern here by Scheib. He's open in the end zone, but now he makes a move and gets away, and there's a little slip in the backfield by number seven, Quentin Jones, and he's open, and Jeff George finds him, and he hit him perfectly in the numbers for a touchdown. 7-0, Purdue leads it early. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. Find, uh, he can find his his, his pass receiver, number 81, Lance Scheib in the end zone. A quick start for the Purdue Boilermakers after a blocked punt early here in the first period. Purdue leads seven to nothing. Jonathan Briggs about to kick it off. Keith Tinsley is deep. Didn't take the Boilermakers long to get on the board. 11.40 to go, first quarter. the boot by Briggs carrying to about the three yard line. Tinsley moving to the near sideline gets it up to about the 24 before he's forced out of bounds. Number 42 Merkel Williams after a 23 yard return. A clash of the pads on the sidelines. This Purdue Boilermaker team is really ready to play and Leon Burtnett has his team up and at him. When the Pitt Panthers have the ball, here are two guys to focus on. Rod Woodson in that defensive backfield for Purdue. Reggie Williams, who is John Kenjemi's favorite receiver for the Pitt Panthers. First down at the 25-yard line for Pitt. Kenjemi rolling right. Got rid of it just before he was hit. The pass is intercepted by Ronnie Beats. And the Purdue Watermakers have got the ball back. Ronnie Bates, number three, junior from Carson, California. Just a great play by Beeks. Unfortunately, John Jimmy threw the ball when he shouldn't have. He was chased out there, and Mike Gottfried does not like the trend of what's going on. Watch Jimmy now. He rolls out to the right. He's chased by the defenders. And... Bill Number Hitchcock and Fred Strickland, the Strickland. two men chasing him. That's right. And, it, and there it is, the interception by uh, Ronnie Beeks, and they got good field position again. In motion is Brad Schumacher. Jeff George back to throw on first down, and he's got his man at the 28-yard line. Ted Geloff, the junior from Chicago on the reception. Quinton Jones made the tackle after a five-yard gain. Out of the shotgun. Teddy Geloff, just a nice little short turnout on the outside. And he moves the ball down to the 27-yard line. Jeff George moves that ball pretty quick. He's got a pretty good arm, doesn't he? He hasn't missed yet. <laughs> there you see it. Three out of three, 25 yards, one touchdown. And Purdue an excellent field position again. Second down short. George back to throw on second down. Pass incomplete. The intended receiver was Jerry Chaney, number 24. They tried and the first incompletion of the day for Jeff George. What they tried to do is sneak Jerry Chaney out of the backfield off of a pro set and, and, and work on one of those linebackers. He just missed him. It was a good defensive play by, by the uh, Pitt Panther defenders. Jack Berry comes in at tight end, replacing Schumacher. Berry, number 96. Look what they got in the backfield. Number 71, Dwayne Penn. Third down, about two yards to go for the first down. Block the ball carrier. He should have enough for the first down. Looks like he got to about the 25-yard line. That's the Purdue refrigerator. Number 71, Dwayne Penn. Steve Apke, number 50, making the tackle. First down, Boilermakers. I guess they'll have to call him the locomotive here, eh? I would think here at Purdue. <laughs> Leon Burnett has a few tricks up his sleeve this afternoon. That 
not one of them bringing a offensive lineman Dwayne Penn into the backfield on short situations. Got a double wing now. Shy of in motion. George back to throw. He slipped a little bit on that turf. Firing for Shy in the end zone. Touchdown. Hello. Let Shy. Touchdown, it's 13 nothing. Twenty-five yard T D by Lance Shy. This is the second touchdown of this football game. Jeff George went back to pass. He slipped a little bit, found his man, saw that he was open in the end zone, and whipped it out there. And I'll tell you what, this Purdue football team looks awfully good, and all the publicity of Jeff George uh, really has right at this point. Looks like it's all coming true. Jonathan Briggs is a penalty marker down. On the extra point attempt. Procedure penalty against Purdue. They'll try it again. Well, we had to have some confusion in that uh, Pittsburgh defense because nobody, I say nobody, was even close to Lance Shot. Number 81 in the end zone. Full start. Offense re kick. There's Rick Bruner. He was injured earlier in the game. He left the field for a moment, but he's all right. The yeah, he wants to get into the act, I think, huh? The man replacing him, Lance Scheib, has done all right. Two touchdown receptions. Now the extra point attempt by Briggs from five yards deeper is good. And the Watermakers have it going. Ten minutes, 14 seconds remaining in the opening quarter, and Purdue has jumped on top by two touchdowns. Watch the man in motion, number 81, Lance Scheib. He goes down the sideline, Jeff George. Finds him in the end zone after a short slip. He sees he's open, perfectly thrown for six points. Nobody there. A defensive mistake by the Pittsburgh Panthers. And you know what? These are the first scores in the first half by anybody against this Pittsburgh defense. A well, great field position by Purdue. They blocked a punt. They intercepted a pass. They didn't have long to go for either of those drives, and they capitalized on them both. 14-0. Keith Tinsley awaits the kickoff from Jonathan Briggs. Tinsley will field it at the two yard line. Up to about the 21, down he goes. First hit was made by Ernie Schrummeyer, number 16, who did the punting for Purdue last year. 22 yard return by Keith Tinsley. And this Purdue team is really fired up. They're flying down that down that field. I think they probably remember that 31 to 30 loss last year against uh, against Pittsburgh. Four plays, the last touchdown, 35 yards, one minute and 11 seconds. And when you got a when you got a uh, a shotgun like Jeff George, you can you can score that quickly. First down, the 21 yard line. Can Jimmy give him the drive? Makes it up to about the 29 before he's tackled by Chris Keepers. Good block there by Mark Stepnowski, number 77, the offensive right guard for the Pitt Panthers to spring Gladman loose. And if you give Charlie Gladman a little bit of room, he'll run to daylight. He's got that good balance, and he does pick up eight yards on the play. That sets up a second down and two at the Pitt 29. The Panthers trailing by 14 early in the first quarter. Jemmy with a straight drop. The pass is caught by Brown, and Brown gets close to the first down out across the 30 yard line. Don't think he got quite enough to get the first down. It'll be measurable. It's very, very close. Three yard game. Tom Brown, Brown, a senior from Lower Burrell, Pennsylvania, tackled by Ronnie Beeks. It's a little flat pass. They're going to bring in the change. Well, where they've marked the ball, he might have enough for the first down. It It'll be like he very, did it first. very, very close. It'll be a first down by about an inch. Whoops, six inches. First down, Pittsburgh. Their first first down of the day. 
Don't something. count this Pittsburgh team out. Now they're a very good offensive a good team, and it is yeah. somewhat important, though, that they get some kind of an offensive drive going here. <laughs> Tell me, if they get behind 21 to nothing, uh, uh, they could they could beat Katie Gabbard the door very quickly. The way uh, Jeff George is throwing the ball today. Osborne is wide right, scales wide left, and Jimmy on the handoff. The football is loose at the 30-yard line. A fumble. I think they called him down. Kevin Holly, number 99, made the stop for Purdue. Chris Kieber has had the football, but Purdue does not recover that fumble. And a one-yard loss on the play. Watch, watch this defensive team come in there. They're getting so much penetration that the Pittsburgh team can, cannot even run it. He's being tackled, number 32, Charlie Goodman, before he even gets to the line of scrimmage. Second down, about 12 yards to go for the first down. In motion, Reggie Williams. And Jimmy hands to Gladman, lots of room. And Gladman all the way out to the 45-yard line. First down for the Panthers, Mike Weaver making the stop for Purdue. That's more like Charles Gladman. And of course, that good blocking up front by that offensive line for a first down uh, for the Pittsburgh Pan Panthers. Gladman with those totals last year ranked 13th in the nation in rushing. It's a straight handoff right straight ahead through the middle of that Purdue defense. Four carries for 22 yards now for Gladman. It's a first down for Pitt. At their own 45. Eight minutes, 10 seconds remaining. First quarter. Purdue with a 14-0 lead. Williams in motion. With plenty of time. The pass incomplete. The intended receiver, Tom Brown. Ronnie Beeks was close to that football. He almost had a chance for a second interception. <laughs> you bet. The Boilermakers went into that zone defense, and Kunjemi saw his fullback, number 44, Tom Brown, in the seam. He tried to throw it in the seam, overthrew it. But when you overthrow it against the zone, it looks like many times you can get those interceptions. Unfortunately, Purdue couldn't get to the ball. We have a moment. Let's pause five seconds for station identification. Second down, 10 at the pit 45. And Demi is going to be brought down by number 47, Gerald Williams, a sophomore from Las Vegas. Gerald Williams, the linebacker, that's on a blitz. Comes from the left side and blitzes John Conjemi. Here he comes, number 47. Nobody touches him. Got a good shot. At John Conjemi and Gerald Williams makes the sack. It'll be third down and 11. Seven minutes, 23 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Osborne comes out wide left. In motion, Chuck Scales. Conjemi back to throw on third and long. Firing up the middle, and that one is complete at the 43 yard line. Kevin Sumlin making the stop. Uh, number 85, Hosea Hurd. A 13-yard gain, a first down for the Panthers. And that zone defense found a hole in it. Conjemi hit his flanker, and it's a first down for the Pitt Panthers. So the Panthers offensively beginning to penetrate that Boilermaker defense a little bit. This is their third first down in this drive. Boilermakers had a little bit of pressure on Kunjemi, but he got away from it last play. Double wing. The man in motion is Chuck Scales. The handoff is to the fullback, Tom Brown. He got a couple of yards before he was brought down by Kevin Holly. Right straight ahead, no gain. Good defensive play by Kevin Holly. A gain of two. It'll be second down. Let's call it a gain of one. Second down and nine. Brown primarily a blocking back. Doesn't carry the football that much. But you have to keep that defense on us. And what we said, they had a balanced attack. They do run, they do pass. It's a triple wing left. Second down, nine. At the 42-yard line of Purdue. And Jenny back to throw. And this one is caught by Bill Osborne. He was hit immediately by Rod Woodson. After a gain of about three yards. Now you'll know why this Woodson is an All-American candidate, even though number 12, Billy Osborne, caught it in front of him. Rod Woodson came out there and really made him pay for this catch. Good little move. It's a five-yard gain. There's number 12. He stops on the outside. Billy Osborne tackled by that Rod Woodson. 
Third down and four. Watch Dixon out here. He's he's an All-American candidate. Good good position and good technique, and his man doesn't come close to the ball. He's working against a freshman, Bill Hitchcock. Third down four. Kajemi firing complete to Reggie Williams at the 20, at the 10, at the five. Rod Woodson finally brought down Reggie Williams. Oh, good move by Reggie and Williams. Williams banged up a little on that play. Working against the zone and working against Rod Woodson, Reggie Williams looks like he hurt an ankle or hurt a knee. Reggie Williams from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. He went to the same high school that Joe Namath did. Watch his good move by Reggie Williams and a good pass by John Congemi. Looked him off in the middle of his own. Reggie Williams catches the ball wide open and he knows what to do with the one he catches it. He gets all the way down to the six yard line, five yard line, excuse me. And it'll be first and, and goal for the Pittsburgh Panthers. And Reggie Williams is down on the ground in a injured an ankle. He tried to make it off the field under his own power, but was unable to do so. So with Purdue leading by 14, the Pitt Panthers knocking on the door. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. On Kramer, Pete Van Wuren back at Ross Aid Stadium. 5-17 to go first quarter. First and goal for Pitt at the five-yard line. Double tight in. Both Vernon Kirk and Tom Hubner in there. Two tight ends. First and goal. Gain of about two yards, maybe three, for Craig Hayward. Kevin Sullivan and Tony Visco brought him down. That was a good run by the big fullback, Craig Hayward, around the right side. Watch him get away from one of the tacklers. They will mark the ball at the one yard line. Stays on his feet and gets to the one yard line. They were a sophomore from Passaic, New Jersey. Second and goal from the one. Gladman and Hayward, the running backs, behind John Congemi. This is Gladman. Almost. Almost ain't good enough. Kevin Sumlin was there, though, to prevent Gladman from getting into the end zone, along with Fred Strickland. Third and goal. Straight ahead. Good defensive play. By number three, Ronnie Beeks. And number 48, Fred Strickland. Fred Strickland was the leading tackler for Purdue last week against Ball State. He had 13 tackles. Third down goal from the one. Gladman didn't get in. He didn't get in. Rod Woodson. Close the door on Charles Gladman. That's just great defensive play by the Purdue Boilermakers. They're getting a lot of penetration. Now what does Mike Gottfried do? Does he does he try to get the ex, the, the field goal or does he go for the for the seven points? And it looks like he's going to go for the seven points. Watch the great penetration by the defense of uh, of Purdue. Number 26 was the guy who made the play. Rod Woodson from his halfback spot. Fourth and goal. The Boilermakers trying to stop the Panthers. That's the touchdown that the Panthers were looking for. Craig Hayward pulling it into the end zone to get Pitt on the scoreboard. But they gave ground grudgingly, and I'll tell you what, that's a tribute to the defense. It took them four shots to get it in from five yards. Watch just a good play, good strong play by Craig Hayward, right straight ahead, good blocking, into the end zone, barely into the end zone, but barely means six points. Now the extra point attempt by Jeff Van Horn. Freshman out of Cheney Washington. Van Horn's kick is good. And the Pitt Panthers have cut into that Purdue lead with 339 remaining. In the first quarter it is Purdue 14 Pitt 7. Quarter. Big drive by the Pitt Panthers. They really needed those seven points. They didn't want to let this game get out of hand, and they're right back into this football game. Could be one of those high scores like last year. Van Horn set to kick it off. Medlock and Woodson are deep. Remember, Woodson returned one for 97 yards and a touchdown last week against Ball State. They are going to kick it to him, though. 
Medlock having trouble finding the handle has it now across the 20 across the 25 about the 31 yard line before he's brought down number 45 Matt Lavinia making the stop for the Panthers. I think I'd try to kick it away from Woodson too. Last week he just flew on that 97 yard play. 14 plays 79 yards time of possession 635 and of course that big play 33 yards reception by Reggie Williams he got hurt on that play we hope we'll see him back in this football game first down Purdue now at the 31 yard line their own 31. to Jerry Cheney who got about two yards before he was brought down. You can hear on your television screen the defense from the Pitt Panthers saying watch out for the draw watch out for the draw and you know what play they called the draw. <laughs> that was it. Jerry Cheney picks up two yards. Jerry Olsavsky making the stop for the Panthers. Cheney a junior college transfer from Compton California is a native of Port Arthur Texas. Cheney and Medlock, the running backs behind Jeff George. Lance Scheib in motion. After the fake handoff, George back to throw. The pass is caught by Jeff Gary. The tight end for first down. Billy Owens, number one, making the stop for the Panthers. Very right straight, straight across the field from right to left. Jeff George hit him perfectly in the middle. Billy Owens defensively. Watch him look out. Watch him look people off. Good fake to his to his tailback. Number number 24, Jerry Cheney, finds the open man very wide open. Billy Owens couldn't keep up with him, and it's a first down for Purdue. Jeff George now five out of six for 63 yards in the passing department. It's a first down at the Purdue 42. Shy in motion again. George handing off to his tailback, but no running room this time for Jerry Cheney. He's dropped for a loss of about three yards. Steve Apke, number 50. Oh, and he's a good one. Apke made about 16 tackles last week, and he was an outstanding defender. Nobody touched him on that defense uh, from the offense, and he came right in and made the great tackle against Jerry Cheney. So it'll be second down and 12. Less you than think you'll go up to the now. sky? <laughs> we'll see if Jeff George puts this one up on second and long. In motion. George back to throw. Under some pressure. Down he goes. John Carter, number 89. A junior from Angie, Louisiana. That's what to bring down Jeff George. That's what they need against Jeff George. They have to get the rush on. And big number 89 did it. John Carter got to Jeff George. He's on the ground. And you can't throw off the ground. And it's an 11-yard loss against uh, against the Purdue Boilermakers. So it'll be third down and 20. Don't They, they don't want to do anything... Uh, uh, too risky here. Barry and Bruner both come out wide right. Scheib is wide left. From the shotgun. Barry in motion. Third and 20. George back to throw. The pass is intercepted. Like I said, you don't want to do anything too risky. Billy Owens got right in the way of a Jeff George pass and they are now within one point of the Purdue Boilermakers. He just did not look at his man, did not look at the defense. Watch number one sitting out here. Number one, Billy Owens, he just goes back and a little turn in, run in front of him. Boom, there he is. And it's a touchdown. yards on the interception return by Billy Owens. And now Van Horn's extra point attempt is good. That gets it even quick. So the Pitt Panthers have stormed back here in the first quarter with 52 seconds remaining. They gave up two early touchdowns to Purdue, but now we have a 14-14 ball game. Mike Gottfried's got his tie off. He's playing an informal game right now, and it looks like uh, number one, Billy Owens, wants to play that kind of game too. Jeff George just misread the defense and he forced the ball and uh, Billy Owens was there for the touchdown and it's got this ball game tied up. That is one thing that Leon Burnett was telling us yesterday that as a freshman with very little college experience Jeff George at times has a tendency to just throw that ball out there not realizing that 
If he doesn't have a receiver open, he might be better off doing something else. And Leon Burnett certainly does not like that throw. I, I, I observed one other little thing. Uh, when quarterback Jeff George threw the interception, he didn't go after number one, Billy Owens, and try to make the tackle. I think he could have stopped him before he got into the end zone if he would have hustled over and tried to make the play. Reggie Williams on the sideline has that left leg heavily wrapped. Looks like he's through for the afternoon. That's a big blow to the Panthers. He's their top receiver. And a good one. He made that 33-yard play on that on their first touchdown. Well, with 52 seconds remaining in the first quarter, Van Horn kicking it off. Woodson and Medlock are deep. Medlock at the 15. To the 38-yard line. I guess you don't want to kick the ball either to Woodson or Medlock. Both of them can return it. Medlock that time for 18 yards and good field position on the 37 yard line. So the Boilermakers have a first down at their own 37 with 47 seconds remaining in the first quarter and a 14 14 game. This is a good one a barn burner. We'll see how we'll see how Jeff George takes that last interception. By Cheney at the 41 yard line. He's brought down immediately by Steve Apke, number 50. Well, he's a hitter, isn't he? That's Steve Apke. He really slams him down. Number 24, Jerry Cheney, on a little pass forward on a four yard game. So obviously, Jeff George, Jeff George took the interception okay. He went right back into the passing game. Purdue lost a lot of people in their backfield and from their receiving core last year. New names for the Boilermakers. Shotgun. Second and six. George Michael's intended receiver was Lance Scheib. Quinton Jones back there in the coverage. George threw that one almost sidearm. He trapped it. He was getting some pressure, though. From the outside man, number 59, Walter Johnson. We got one second left here in the first quarter. Time enough for one more play. It'll be third down and six. When you get the rush on those quarterbacks, they become dirt throwers. That means they throw them right down into the ground. Final play of the first quarter. Third and six. The ball at the Purdue 42. Comes the blitz. Big hit by Tony Woods, who had 15 sacks last year. And he got the quarterback, Jeff George, and also the football. That's what you have to do to these quarterbacks. He had a man open downfield. You watch and see here, it was picked up beautifully. They had a right play called. Jeff George pumped the ball. Unfortunately, didn't get it off quick enough to number 81, Lance Scheib. And he was nailed back there by Tony Woods. Fumbled the ball. And Pittsburgh has the ball first and 10 on the 32. At the end of the quarter, we're all tied up 14-14. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. Today's game is being brought to you by Buick and your Buick dealers. For comfort, innovation, and a real commitment to quality, it's today's Buicks. Along with Ron Kramer, Pete Van Weeren, back at ross Aid Stadium in West Lafayette, Indiana, where we've got a good one, 14-14 at the end of a quarter. Another turnover by uh, the Purdue Boilermakers, uh, but it was forced by Big Tony Woods, number 90, who came in strong on Jeff George and really put him to the ground. He fumbled the ball, and now for, uh, Pittsburgh has the ball first and 10 on the 33. Let's see what they can do with it, partner. The momentum turning in this first at the end of the first quarter, very much in Pitt's favor. And Jimmy, back to throw on first down. Firing long downfield, the intended receiver, the tight end, Vernon Kirk. The pass fell incomplete. Ronnie Beeks back there on the coverage for the Boilermakers. And Jimmy just threw it far enough. And number 80, Vernon Kirk, was right up the middle against that Purdue zone. He tried to hit it into the seam, and John Kunjemi saw that he was uh, he was not open and just overthrew it, and it was incomplete. Here's the first down, or first quarter statistics. Uh, pretty even. Kunjemi now four out of eight in the pass. 
passing department. Second down, 10 at the Purdue 32. Lampin spins away from one tackler. That was a good job of running. He only gained about a yard, but he didn't have much help out there. Individual effort, and he's got all the tools to do it. Charlie Gladman got good balance, good speed, finds the holes, and uh, he picked up two yards after being caught behind the line of scrimmage. That's his sixth carry for 25 yards today. Rod Woodson and Kevin Holly brought him down after the two-yard game, third and eight. Passing situation, triple wing right. throw on third and long. The pass is incomplete. The intended receiver number 22, Chuck Scales. The blitz was on. Number 31 back in the coverage for the Boilermakers. Tony Visco, the linebacker, put a lot of pressure on John Kunzemi, and he couldn't get the ball off quick enough, nor could he be accurate enough, and it'll be a fourth down play and a field goal try by the Pittsburgh Heather. Jeff Van Horn, the freshman from Cheney, Washington. Not very big, only 5'9", 170 pounds. He'll try this one from the 37-yard line, a 47-yard attempt. And it is good. So the Pitt Panthers, who trailed 14-0 at one point in this game, have now taken a three-point lead in the opening minute of quarter number two. Stadium where the Boilermakers are now down by three. The and Pitt the Panthers have stormed back in this one. The Panthers have taken advantage of a couple of breaks that they made for themselves. One on an interception, one on a fumble. Same way that the Purdue Boilermakers got their 14 points. You have to take advantage of them, and both teams have today. Van Horn set to kick it off. Woodson and Medlock are deep. And this will be Woodson in the end zone losing it. He'll go down to one knee. The ball will come out to the 20-yard line. Pretty good hands on that Woodson. Did you see him flip that ball around? You know, the experience that the Pittsburgh Panthers have may be showing off right now. They got behind 14 points. They didn't panic. They went right down the field on one of those good drives. Uh, and Conjemi hit Reggie Williams on 33-yard pass play, and they finally got it in on a fourth down play. And then, of course, made some big plays defensively and got back into this football game and lead 17 to 14. First down at the 20 yard line, Jeff George. There's what he's done so far six out of nine for 67 yards. Two touchdowns, one interception. Firing it to the next shot at the 25. He gets to about the 28 yard line. Quinton Jones making the tackle for the Panthers. It'll be second down three. That's a hitch play. He goes down the field about two or three yards and just hitches right there. And Jeff George threw it very quickly. It is a ball control pass, and it's uh, that's his third catch for 43 yards. Second down three. The ball marked at the 27-yard line. No gain. Steve Apke right there for Pittsburgh. There's a future quarterback, a redhead. Following a loss of a yard, it'll be third and four. Purdue must establish a ground game. Otherwise, this Pittsburgh defense is going to mutilate Jeff George back there if he's going to have to throw the ball 40 or 50 times. We may get into some of the record books today if uh, George is going to have to throw it 50 times. Third down and four. looking for a flag there. Look at that stare of Leon Burnett. <laughs> I don't think he likes it. He didn't say a word, but I tend to agree with him a little bit because Gary Richard, number six, was not looking for the ball. All he was looking at is number 81. Lance Scheib, watch him. He sees he's not looking at the ball at all. He's going right for the ball. He's going right for the player, and that is defensive uh, interference. Sean McCarthy will be called on the punt now, the freshman from Fremont, Ohio. He is big, 6'8", 205 pounds. The Panthers 
coming but McCarthy got rid of it. And this one will bounce out of bounds at about the 30 yard line. A 46 yard kick by Sean McCarthy no return. The Pitt Panthers have the ball 12 38 remaining in the second quarter with Pitt leading it by three. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. Next week we'll have Michigan Florida State for you from Ann Arbor Michigan leading 7 3 in the first quarter against Oregon State. Florida State right now trailing North Carolina early in the second quarter. First down at the 30 yard line. Chris Keevers, number 70, brings down Charles Gladman for a loss. Keevers, a transfer from Coffeyville, Kansas Community College. Well, they're going to have to get this defensive team riled up, and they have to get a, get a, have to get across that line of scrimmage. And Keevers does. Look at that! Look at that great tackle. That's good position. He's got his legs wide. He's got his face right in the chest of number 32, Charles Gladman, and he's down for a two-yard loss. So it'll be second down and 12 at the pit 29. The handoff to the fullback Tom Brown. Brown gets it out close to a first down. He got to about the 39 yard line. Needed to get to the 40. Fred Strickland and Ronnie Beeks there to make the tackle along with Kevin Sumlin. Well, the defense now, they're keying on Charles Gladman. And they're just handing the ball off to their fullback on a quick opener up the middle for about 11 yards very close to a first down. We're going to have a measurement and Tommy Brown 44 just busted right into that defense of uh, the Purdue Boilermakers. This will be very close. I think it's going to be a little bit short. Oops. The first signal we got was for a first down. And now it's been confirmed. Referee James Garvey. Well, it depends on whether he put his foot, the right foot or the left foot. That's what everybody always says. But the referee knows just about exactly where it is. So it's a first down for the Panthers at their own 40 yard line. Probably wouldn't have made that much difference anyway. They would have had a third down and inches to go. Gladman comes out wide right. Tom Brown, the lone running back behind John Kenjimi. And he gets the ball and gains about two. It'll be second down and eight at the 42. Tony Visco and Fred Strickland there to make the tackle. Tony Visco, number 49, one of several players on this Purdue team from Canada. He's from Mississauga, Ontario. Yeah, they have three or four of them from up there. They got a they got a straight line from um, the Canadians uh, right here to Purdue. Second down eight. Eleven minutes to go in the first half. The Pitt Panthers leading at 17-14. We got a double wing. And Jimmy back to throw. He has time. He also has a wide open receiver, Chuck Scales. And that's a first down at the 43 yard line of Purdue. Rod Woodson forced him out of bounds. Chuck Scales was wide open out there. Nice little play and Kanjemi found him against that zone. Chuck Scales from a football family. His father Charlie Scales played in the NFL for the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cleveland Browns back in the early 60s. See the guy out here Jose Hurd who cleared it out. A good gainer. For the Pittsburgh Panthers. First down at the 43 yard line of Purdue. Gladman. That's close to the first down. He gained about seven yards before being forced out of bounds at the 36 yard line. He had Randy Dixon. Oh, that was a good block. I'll tell you something. You saw the same thing I did. Randy Dixon really got out front of Charles Gladman and made a good block out there. That was his eighth carry for 30 yards. Dixon was voted the outstanding lineman on this pit team last year. He's been an all east selection each of the last two years. Second down three at the 36 yard line. The fullback Tom Brown. Close to the first down. He got to about the 33. It'll be very close. Probably maybe a half. It looks like to me about a half yard short. Fred Strickland again in on that tackle. Boy, we've called his name a lot this afternoon. 
Strickland an honorable mention all Big Ten pick last year. Maybe aiming a little higher this season. Less than a yard to go for the first half. Third and one. Ten minutes remaining in the first half. This will be a big play for Purdue's defense. If they can hold this Pitt Panther team, they'll put them in a position where they either have to go for it on fourth down or kick a field goal. In a running situation, two tight ends in there now for the Panthers. The fullback Tom Brown pulls his way to the 31-yard line. He got the first down. A correction, that was not Tom Brown. It was Craig Hayward. Mark Foster and Rod Woodson making the tackle, but it is a first down. Craig Hayward comes in on the short yardage plays. He's a big one. You know, he's about 225 pounds. Watch his offensive line blocking. You can see some good blocks up there, just pushing that Purdue defense right back three or four yards. And good enough for the first down, Craig Haywood. And it's Purdue first from 10 on the 31. Nine and a half minutes remaining in the half. Charles Gladman looking for running room finds Kevin Holly instead, number 99. They just have to start making more of these plays consistently. They're making one play like that, getting good penetration on the next play. The Pitt Panthers are able to pick up nine or ten yards and first down. A loss of a yard on that play at second down 11. And Michael doing Stewart. a good job at ball control. Michael Stewart in there for Reggie Williams, who was injured early. Stewart out wide left. And Jenny back to throw. It is caught by Bill Osborne, and Osborne gets it inside the 20-yard line. Mark Foster, number 31, finally brought him down. It'll be another first down for the Pitt Panthers. Well, Osborne, Billy Osborne, who was wide open as a flanker because of the blitz was on. See, all those players are gone. And there he is, wide open in the middle. Conjemi found him. And it's a first down again for the Pitt Panthers in good field position on the 20-yard line. Osborne playing an entirely different position in college ball. He was a quarterback back in Wildwood Press, New Jersey. When you have the blitz coming, you got man to man, and that's what got him open. First down at the 19 yard line. Losing about seven yards. Could not get away from Gerald Williams, number 47. Here they come again. They make a big play on first down, but then Pittsburgh's been able to come back and get those first downs. Minus six yards. What's number 47 come through here on the blitz? Good penetration. There he is, right into the backfield. So it'll now be second down, about 17 yards to go for the first down. Bruner, who was injured early, came back and tried to play, but now Rick Bruner being taken to the Purdue dressing room. Looks like his back is bothering him. Second down 17. And Jimmy on second and long back to throw. The pass is caught by Osborne but Osborne lost his footing almost immediately upon catching the ball and Fred Strickland was there to bring him down. Oh short yardage and Strickland was out there along with Rod Woodson. I don't believe he would have made more yardage than he did but it was a completion again to number 12 Billy Osborne from John Conjemi. Conjemi really can throw that ball can he partner. They're down and 11. Ball control ball control the, the clock keeps running 744. Pittsburgh leading Purdue 17 to 14. I think we got a timeout on the field. The Pitt Panthers have called the timeout. John Conjemi heads for the sidelines to see what Mike Gottfried would like him to do in this situation. Third down, 11. The Get me six points. Line. I'll tell you, that's what he's going to tell. Get me six points. I need it now. So the clock stops with 7.38 remaining in the first half. And Pittsburgh leading it by three. Well, we'll see what the Panthers have come up with here. Third down, about 11 yards to go for the first down. The one thing the Panthers are doing right now is they're keeping the ball away from Purdue. It's good ball control. 7.38 to go in the first half. Osborne in motion. And Jimmy dumps it to his fullback. Fred Strickland was right there to bring down Tom Brown. 
Freddie Strickland, that, that, that All-American candidate, had a good hold on Brown, and there was no way he was going to, he was keying on him, and when he, when, when Conjemi just flipped it over the line, he was right there to make the tackle. It'll be fourth down and about eight yards to go, and again, Pittsburgh will try for a field goal. This will be a 35-yard attempt by Jeff Van Horn. Conjemi now 8 of 13 for 89 yards in the passing department. Van Horn with his second field goal effort of the day, and he's two for two. This one from 35 yards out. And the Pitt Panthers have now lengthened their lead to six points. It is 27, 20 to 14. Seven minutes, 29 seconds remaining in this first half. Van Horn, good from 47 yards and now from 35 yards. Well, we're going to get to see Jeff George again. He hasn't been too accurate the last couple of times on the field because, because he's thrown an interception and, of course, fumbled the ball. But there are an awful lot of people up in the stands that really like him. About 238 of them, as a this matter of fact. This is an amazing fact, story. Yeah, it really is. Bought season tickets. They're friends and relatives of Jeff George. They have spent $19,992. They sit in Section 2, low in Section 2, high in Section 3. And they're all out here rooting on their young freshman, Jeff George. And I'll tell you what, he hasn't, uh, he, he's, hasn't done a good job the last couple of uh, series, but he has thrown two touchdown passes, and they're only six points behind, and he can get them on the scoreboard very quickly. That's all the friends uh, and relatives of Jeff George. Boy, God bless him. And you know, his scholarship's only worth about 12000 so they already made 7000 on it. <laughs> Waiting for the kickoff for Purdue, Rod Woodson and James Medlock. Van Horn to kick it off for Pitt. This will be Woodson at the two-yard line. Out to the 26-yard line before he's brought down by James Turner, number 88. 25-yard return by Woodson. Now we'll see if Purdue can get anything going offensively. They've really been unable to sustain any long offense. Wow, time. look at this guy, old Iron Mike. Uh, from the Pitt Panthers, a 1960 All-American, of course, uh, one of the great tight ends of the National Football League and coach of the Chicago Bears. I'll see him this weekend uh, uh, in, uh, in Green Bay. And what a great defensive player he was. First down at the 26-yard line. George hands the ball off. With very little running room there for James Medlock, the junior from Waycross, Georgia. A gain of maybe three yards. Lorenzo Freeman there to make the stop. Second down, seven. Well, the Purdue Boilermakers just have not established that ground game, and they have to get that ground game going in order to get that passing game going. Second and seven at their own 30. The Boilermakers down by six. Schumacher in motion. George back to throw. Complete the intended receiver, Lorenzo McLean, number six, Daryl Woods there on the coverage. George being rushed again, though. I think Tony Woods, number 90. Jeff George now seven out of 12, good for 74 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Now they aren't giving that young freshman, Jeff George, a lot of room to maneuver now. They're doing a lot of blitzing, a lot of stunning in front of him, and they're getting a lot of penetration, making him throw the ball quicker. Third and seven. The shotgun. The pass is caught by Ted Geloff, the junior from Chicago. Looks like a first down. They will probably have to bring the chains out. Nope, they won't need to. First down. It was close enough. So the Boilermakers have a first down at the 37 yard line. Nice little turnout. Good catch by Ted Gelloff out on the right side and a first down. George back to throw. Gelloff again, the receiver at the 47 yard line. He's brought down by number six, Gary Richard. That looks like that'll be close to another first down. If they measure it, it will be by six inches. I think. Gelloff again on an out turn. And a little quicker pass by uh, Jeff George. What they did is now, instead of throwing those long passes, they're going to throw them a little shorter, and they're going to throw in front of the defenders rather than behind them. 
They're finding that the uh, quarterbacks Gary Richard and Troy Washington are both playing back a little bit so they're going to throw it right in front of him. That's going to take some of the pressure off of Jeff George uh, from the blitz. They measure for the first down. It is a first down for Purdue. Let's update you on a couple of the injured players. Reggie Williams is having his left leg x-rayed for the Pitt Panthers. He will not be back the remainder of the afternoon. Rick Bruner of Purdue has some back spasms may not return. 558 to go first half first down for Purdue at the 47 yard line their own 47. Receiver. I think the right tackle from the Purdue Boilermakers moved just as slightly prior to the snap, and it was a late it was a late uh, flag. But I, I am sure that that's going to what it's going to be against uh, Purdue. Actually, they cannot refuse the penalty because it's prior to the snap. It's been a remarkably penalty-free game. This is only the second flag we've had in the entire first half. The other one was for a delay of game. Oh, it's a, it's a good hard-hitting football game, too. There's some good hitting out there. So this will move it back to the 42-yard line. It'll be first and 15. Five minutes, 35 seconds remaining in the first half. We got the replay incomplete. Jeff George with a short drop his pass intended for Gallup almost intercepted by Quinton Jones. Boy, Quinton Jones had a shot at it. Oh he played it well. Gallup slipped out there but that ball should not have been thrown. He was not he was not set to throw it and and uh, Quinton Jones was right in great position to pick it off and take it right down the field for six points because nobody was out there. Yeah if he had intercepted that one he was gone. That was not a good throw by Jeff George. As we said, he's young and he's forcing the ball a bit. And now Rod Woodson, number 26, is checked into the offensive. Just one new, new little wrinkle by our bell, Leon Burtnett. Woodson, flanked wide left. He wants to get a man to man. George throwing long downfield for Woodson. It is incomplete. Back there on the coverage, number 43, Troy Washington, and number six, Gary Richard. They had a double on him, Washington. And uh, and Gary Richard, here's Woodson down the field. He runs a little out pattern and up the field. Again, Jeff George forces the ball. The defenders are there. Good thing that Rod Woodson's a defensive man because he knocked the ball down. Woodson with his first offensive action. Since coming to Purdue, but the incompletion makes it third down and 15. George under pressure gets rid of it. The pass is caught by Medlock. Medlock gets it out to midfield before he's forced out of bounds by Billy Owens. But it'll be about seven yards shy of the first down. Good Speaking play by Steve have Played offensive and defensive positions for Purdue. There's one, Leroy Keyes, two-time well, All-American. Not only that, Leroy Keyes could really run the ball. He's got a couple of couple of times that he ran over 200 yards in one game. It is a fourth down situation, and Sean McCarthy is on the punt. Back deep for Pittsburgh is Keith Tinsley. Standing on his own 10 yard line. Five minutes, 10 seconds remaining in the half. Pitt leading at 2014. Off the side of his foot. Not a good kick that time by McCarthy. And it'll drop on the 33 yard line. Not very good at all. And they've always had some suspect in, in their kicking game. And that'll show you why Sean McCarthy for only 17 yards. Good field position for the Pittsburgh Panthers. So McCarthy shanks one and. The Pitt Panthers get the ball back with 4.59 remaining in the half. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. This telecast is authorized under the broadcasting rights granted by the Big Ten Conference and the Turner Broadcasting System. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the written, express consent of the Big Ten and the Turner Broadcasting System Incorporated is prohibited. And 
we thank the Purdue gals for making our job a little bit easier. Over today. There's the new logo of the Big Ten Conference. And of course the, the TBS the Sports, Sports logo. Center. They go hand in hand partner. 459 to go. Pitt has the ball first down. Penalty markers have been thrown. Might be a motion penalty against Pitt. Looks like the umpire caught something in the middle. This will be against the Panthers. Now this Purdue defense on this on this chains exchange right now with 457 left is going to have to show this Pitt Panther Ten team. Ball. ball start. Offense. First down. That they can hold them because they have to establish right now so that if Purdue gets the ball back they can start to move and get back into this football game. As you see Pitt has controlled the football for quite a bit of this game particularly in the second quarter. Those numbers were fairly even in the first quarter. Charles Gladman shows his open field ability getting it out to the 34 yard line. Oh what a movie made out there Gladwin. Kevin Sumlin and Rod Woodson there for the tackle. Didn't see any in th anything inside. Looked to the outside. Made a great juke out there. And didn't look like he was going to pick up anything, and he picked up five yards. So it'll be second down. About ten yards to go for the first down. Scales in motion. And Jimmy with time throwing for scales, but he threw it out of bounds, incomplete. Good pressure by that Purdue defense. And Jimmy now eight out of 14 for 89 yards. The big plays have been made um, uh, defensively for both teams. That's put them in great position to get points on the scoreboard. Four minutes, 11 seconds remaining. Those in your girls in blue. They got golden ones, black ones, silver ones. Now they got the blue girls. Third down, nine yards to go. And Jimmy firing long downfield, incomplete. Chuck Scales had it and lost it at the 45 oh, yard line. He was wide open in the seam of the zone. Chuck Scales, number 22, unfortunately. John Conjemi, you watch the pass, is thrown just a trite behind Scales, and it's a hard catch to make when he has to turn around backwards. See how he had to turn around backwards? And that means what, with his eyes, he loses the ball and unfortunately could not hang on to it. Some of these catches are made, but it would have been a great one. So John Rasp enters the game. He'll do the kicking. The defense did it for Purdue. They're getting the ball back. Looks like the Boilermakers are going to go after him. And the kick toward Ron Woodson will carry to the 23 24 yard line. He lost it and then got it back. And that's where the Boilermakers will put it in play with 3.58 to go in the first half. Rod Woodson. 43 yard kick by John Rask. Got a little anxious, but got back on the ball. <laughs> 42 yards on the punt. So the Boilermakers have it with 3.58 to go in the first half. And Purdue trailing by six. They have to get some offense working here, the Purdue Vale of Boilermakers. George back to throw. He's got pressure applied, and down he goes. Ezekiel Gadsden, a junior from Frogmore, South Carolina. Well, the one thing you can't do against these Pittsburgh Panthers is you can't stand back there too long. They got that good blitz going on. And look at look at my man number 26. He's a great player. From where where, where was he from? My favorite town, Frogmore, South Carolina. <laughs> His name is Gadsden, and I'll tell you what, he did a good sack on Jeff George. He was a tailback in high school, Gadsden was. Now he's an outside linebacker for the Pitt Panthers. It is second down, 23 yards to go now for the first down. They operate from the shotgun. George passed complete to Jerry Cheney. Got it out to about the 17-yard line. Whitten Jones with a good tackle. Hard, tough football game. Third down. It'll be third down now, about 
16 yards to go for the first down. We got a timeout by Pittsburgh. They're trying to keep some time on that board and hold the Purdue Boilermakers down there in their own territory so that they can get the ball back and get some points on the scoreboard. We can talk a little bit about schedule while we have a moment. Purdue has a tough one next week. They take on Notre Dame at Notre Dame. And then their Big Ten opener will be taking place right here at ross Aid Stadium October 4th against Minnesota. And next week we have Michigan and Florida State in Ann Arbor. My old hometown. Now you know that place pretty well. Oh, I love it up there. I love Michigan. I love the Big Ten. And it's been just fun doing these Big Ten games in all of these great cities, uh, especially here in West Lafayette. We go to what's our little place that we go to? Uh, the pub downtown oh, here yeah. in West Lafayette. One of our favorite spots. Earlier today, pit coach Mike Gottfried was talking about his philosophy regarding the integration of bringing a new offense to Pitt. I think they've adapted pretty well to what we're trying to do. Uh, you know, I think anytime there's a transition year, it's difficult because you still feel your way a little bit. I was just telling somebody down there that I felt like it, if we were in a league, it'd be easier for me to say the first three games are like a pro exhibition season, but we're not in the league and we can't afford to lose opportunities to win early. But uh, usually in a new year and a new transition period, it takes three, four ball games before your players really feel comfortable with what you're doing. Pitt will be home again next week to take on West Virginia. Of course, Mike Gottfried would like to get in that win column. His teams have played well the first two games, but unfortunately lost the first one, 10 to 7, and tied the second one against North Carolina State. Third down, 17, 3:05 remaining in the half. The Boilermakers trailing by a 20-14 margin. Jeff George under pressure again. Down he goes. Loose football. Who's got it? It's going to be a close one. I think Purdue got it. Nope, Pittsburgh. Nope. The fumble recovered by Lorenzo Freeman, number 76. This Pittsburgh team is tough, and they keep coming on Jeff George. And they say, Jeff George, you were the number one quarterback in high school last year. Welcome to college football, my boy. And now the Panthers have it on the seven-yard line. Here's Jeff. He just takes a little bit too much time. He's got to throw the ball and get rid of it. Good play by big number 90 Tony Woods who knocked the ball right out of his hand on the ground and a good reception a good recovery by the Pittsburgh Panthers. Come Jimmy. Hands the ball to Hayward. Hayward pulling his way toward that end zone. He's in. Craig Hayward. Six feet 260 pounds. Another big play by the Purdue defense in order to get it in and big Hayward goes seven yards for the six points. It is now Pittsburgh 26 Purdue 14. Jeff Van Horn will try to make it 27. Hayward with the second touchdown of the afternoon. The extra point is good and with 253 remaining in the first half the Pitt Panthers have taken a 13 point lead 27 14 over Purdue. Watch Craig Haywood when he gets the ball. A handoff to him. He hits into the line. He will not be denied. He finds an opening and just crushes people to the ground and gets into the end zone for six points. So the Pitt Panthers have turned this thing totally around. They were down 14 nothing early in the first quarter. Haywood's got pretty good size. He's six foot 260. That'll get you into the end zone a few times. <laughs> we have a moment right now. Let's pause five seconds for station identification. WPTT TV channel 22 Pittsburgh. What? Ready now for the pit kickoff. 2.53 left here in the half. Still some time to get on the board. Jeff George, a good passer, but they got to get some patterns in there where he can get rid of the ball without the big rush from the pit panther. Here's the kickoff. Van Horn's kick sailing over toward the sidelines, and it goes out of bounds. He'll now kick from the 30-yard line. On the kickoffs, Pitt has been trying all afternoon to keep the ball away from Rod Woodson. You know, a lot of people don't know the rule. You know, when they kick it out of bounds, 
Purdue could take it out on the six yard line if they really wanted to. If the ball let's say was kicked out on the 40 yard line Purdue could say I'll take it on the 40 yard line rather than the five yard penalty. So this kickoff will now come from the 30. And there you see Rod Woodson standing behind James Medlock. Medlock number 34 Woodson number 26. He needs one of those runs like he did last week against Ball State last week 97 yards by Rod Woodson. And he's got to get the stimulation into this Purdue Boilermaker team. 27 14 the Panthers up by 13 points. Van Horn's kick will be taken by Woodson at the 10 yard line. Chris Ross number 39 finally brought him down. Here's Woodson. He doesn't see a hole up the middle. Great blinding speed. He gets to the outside, outruns the defenders, and gets it up to about the 38 yard line. It'll be first and 10, Purdue. 2.45 remaining in the first half from the shotgun. to the 47 yard line. It'll be close to a first down. Out of the shotgun. A draw play to Medlock. Steve Good blocking Hapke up front. Making the tackle. The chains will be brought out. This will be close to a first down. You notice they went to the shotgun to try to get some of the pressure off of Jeff George. Steve Apke has been a real thorn in the side of Purdue. Devastating. 19 He's a good tackles one. against Purdue last year. Here's the measurement. Just a little bit shy. About three or four inches. So it'll be second down. Plenty of time to get on the scoreboard. 229 left here in the first half. Purdue hasn't Purdue hasn't scored uh, since the first quarter. Here's our halftime. We'll take a look at that great Purdue marching band, a special feature on Proposition 48, one of the most talked about things in college football this year. We'll have highlights of the first half. And we'll take a look back to one week ago for the Big Ten Players of the Week. 2.29, the time remaining in the first half. Well, what's happening to Jeff George right now, the whole team is so inexperienced. That when that Panther defense comes and all the blitzes comes and the stunts, they just aren't able to pick them up. And that's what's happening to Jeff George right now. Second down, less than a yard to go for the first down. George throwing incomplete. And you know who was in there, don't you? Number 26, Rod Woodson. Rod Woodson forgot <laughs> that, that it was a little turnout rather than, rather than straight up the field. And I think they're going to call a penalty against, against, Maybe the offense. Now this one might be going against Rod Woodson. Frank Richard was back there. Or Gary Richard rather was back there in the coverage. That's what it looks like to me. The penalty was declined. It was against Purdue. They'll take the down instead. It'll be third down. Can't understand why they wouldn't take the penalty. Well, they have third down, about a foot to go for the first down. It would, it would have been second down and about six. I know. I can't understand. But unless he called the play off. No play at all. Two minutes, 15 seconds remaining. Come on, now get back. Jerry Trini has the first down out near midfield. Tony Woods. Maybe it, what it tackle. was is an inadvertent flag. That's, that's why the play went on. Here's Woodson. They... And there he is. That's the play before. They just they called a, a penalty, but I don't think the penalty was called. It was third down, and Woodson was not looking for the ball. Could have been because the pass was really not thrown anywhere right. near Woodson. It was uncatchable in that position. First down at the 49-yard line. A minute 53, and the clock moving. The pass intended for Ted Geloff is incomplete. Keith Tinsley back there in the coverage for the Pitt Panthers. And George is on his back again. Big number 20, uh, 92, Burt Grossman. Second putting the pressure on. Down 10. George now 11 out of 20 for 106 yards. 
Here's some scores. North Carolina at halftime still leading Florida State. Michigan very nearly seven to six and uh, Florida seven to nothing over Alabama. Second down and ten. Five in motion. Keith Tinsley made the tackle. We might have a face mask violation here. That's what it looks like to me, partner. And if so, it will be a first down for Purdue. Jeff George getting a little bit better now uh, in reading those defenses. He's got to find that open man. So many times he's been throwing right into the strength of the defense. Face mask. Pittsburgh. Keith Tinsley. The culprit. So this penalty will be stepped off. Is it and going Purdue to be a flagrant? First down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ohio State leading Colorado three to nothing. Rutgers over Cincinnati in the first period ten to nothing. on the play. A personal foul on the passer declined, and a personal foul face mask accepted. Automatic first down. Wow, two of them on one play. Well, the Boilermakers now with plenty of time, a minute 43 remaining. They have a first down at the 27-yard line of Pitt. Shive in motion. The handoff is to Medlock. Medlock gets to the 25-yard line, gaining about two. Little draw play. And eight, Billy Owens making the stop for the Pitt Panthers. Gave him the pass look. They got another play called. There's Jeff George now in the shotgun formation. No huddle with the clock moving. A minute 16. George back to throw. Firing for Gunnock. It is incomplete. Or was it intercepted? Intercepted. Quentin Jones. Great catch by Quentin Jones. The interception gives the ball back to the Pitt Panthers. Quentin Jones, for a moment there, I thought he lost the ball. He did. He juggled it in the end zone. It was thrown at Teddy Gallov, number eight. And it was one of those uh, one of those passes just thrown up in the sky and a great interception. Second By interception Quentin of Jones. the day for the Pitt Panthers. Here it, Here is it goes from the shotgun formation. Jeff George just throws it up for grabs and alley ooper. And the alley oop guy was Quentin Jones who made a great great intercept. Look at he juggles the ball finally makes the catch and has one foot in the in, in the in the end zone for the interception. So now with a minute 11 here it is in the first half. Jemmy will hand the ball to Hayward. Hayward bowls his way out to about the 26 yard line. Boy, he's tough to bring down. I'd hate to play against him. 260 pounds, six foot. Fred Strickland finally pulled him down. He's not a bowling ball, he's a boulder. Gain of six yards. Five carries for 20 yards for that young man. He's got a couple of touchdowns already. And the clock continues to move. Less than a minute now, only 45 seconds remain. That was a big drive uh, thwarted by the Pittsburgh Panthers against the Purdue Boilermakers. Very costly turnover for Purdue. They had gotten a big break on that penalty. And Jimmy hands the ball off for little or no game. It'll be third down. I must say that this prescription turf has certainly held up. You don't see many people slipping after three and three quarter inches of rain last night. A timeout has been taken, stopping the clock with 19 seconds remaining. Pitt will take at least a 13 point lead, it appears, into halftime. Well, we look forward to next week Florida State, Michigan at Ann Arbor. Over 100,000 fans will be on hand for that one. And it looks like uh, Michigan is looking forward to it, too. They're playing Oregon State up in Ann Arbor, and they're only leading right now at halftime, 7 to 6. They're a 40 point, they're a 40 point favorite this week. 19 seconds remaining in the first half. Wonder what old Bo Schembeck was saying in there at halftime. <laughs> I don't think we could repeat it. Woo! I'll pose a pretty calm guy. <laughs> It is third down, about three yards to go for the first down. Purdue scored twice early in this half. Uh, passes from Jeff George. Very early, and then this, the this, this, this pit defense has just, I mean, just hammered them the, the whole uh, 
second part of the first period and the whole second period. 19 seconds to go. Third down three. Long count by Kanjemi. And now he's going to call a timeout. Well, if you can call one, I can call one too. These are very important seconds, though, uh, as we all know, just prior to the half. If Purdue could get the ball back and maybe get some points on the scoreboard, then they would be closer to being back into this football game. Right at this point, they're losing to Pittsburgh 27 to 14. And Pittsburgh really has dominated. Uh, they've done a good job defensively. They, you know, they, they didn't panic. Even though Purdue was ahead 14 to nothing, they just kept coming and coming and coming. And they got Jeff George a little bit confused because Jeff was throwing into some of the defenses. The zones and the man demands that, that he shouldn't have been throwing into. And this is something that Leon Burtnett said would happen. Now we're set to resume with 19 seconds remaining. Third down three. Hey, hey. They hand the ball off to Hayward and he gets it up for the first down. Matt Morgan finally made the stop for Purdue. Well that'll be all she wrote for the first half. That's all. That Pittsburgh want to do is get that first down. They don't have any more timeouts. And I rather doubt that uh, Purdue will call a timeout now with 14 seconds left to go in the football game. Seven, six, five. Pittsburgh leading 27 to 14. And that will be the final play of the half as time expires. So the first half of play is in the record books here at Ross Aid Stadium in West Lafayette, Indiana, and Mike Gottfried's Pitt Panthers have taken a 27 to 14 lead over the Boilermakers on Purdue. With Ron Kramer, Pete Van Wuren back at Ross Aid Stadium in West Lafayette, Indiana, where our halftime score is Pittsburgh 27, Purdue 14. We'll be showing you some halftime highlights a little bit later on. Purdue scoring twice early on passes from Jeff George. To Scheib, one of them going 11 yards, one of them going 25 yards, and Purdue had taken a 14 0 lead just five minutes into the game. But then the Pitt Panthers turned things around. One scoring drive ended with Hayward scoring from a yard out with three minutes and 39 seconds left in the first quarter to make it 14 7. And a 42 yard pass interception return. That by Billy Owens. The extra point was good to tie the game. Jeff Van Horn connected from 47 and 35 yards two field goals making it 20 to 14 and then Hayward scored again this time from seven yards out the extra point made it 27 to 14 on an overcast day here at Ross Aid Stadium the crowd of over 55,000 on hand getting set for one of the great halftime shows in all of college football the show done by the All-American Marching Band of Purdue University we'll be taking a look at that in just a moment. J. Richard Dunscombe is the director of bands here at Purdue. The marching band director is William C. Muffet. And if you ever get a chance to come to a football game at Ross Aid Stadium, get here early because their pregame show is absolutely sensational. 27-14, Pittsburgh leading it at halftime. And now the All-American marching band from Purdue University taking the field here at Ross Aid Stadium. Marching band. Today's halftime program features choreography spectaculars as part of our continuing celebration of a century of Purdue University bands. In the early days, the band was about half of the size of the present group. To illustrate, we will divide the band into a per band and a do band. Watch the per band step out playing, hail to the fighting varsity.
Blue Band steps off playing for the honor of Old Purdue. We combined the sounds of the Purr Band and the Do Band into one magnificent organization called the Purdue University All-American Marching Band. Watch the fancy footwork as the band plays the ever popular T42. the Silver Twins, and the Gold Dusters dance line. Our score at halftime, Pittsburgh 27, Purdue 14. We'll be right back. Purdue Boilermakers 27 to 14. Today's game is being brought to you in part by Strohs and Strohlite. Now you're talking good times, and Strohs is spoken here. Along with Ron Kramer, Pete Van Weeren back here at Purdue University where the Boilermakers jumped on top early 14-0. But now have fallen behind 27-14 at halftime. Crowd of over 55,000 on hand. And we told you earlier that one of our halftime features was going to be about one of the most talked about things in college football this year. And it's all about being eligible to play college football. It's not as easy as it once was. The difference in 1986, one rule. It's rule 5-1-J. And Paul Ryden fills us in on the new rule and its effects. We're at halftime where the Pitt Panthers lead the Purdue Boilermakers 27-14. Ron, your thoughts on this first half? Well, my thoughts are, number one, a guy named uh, Steve Apke, number 50, a linebacker for the Pittsburgh uh, Panthers. He really has done a great job of putting a lot of pressure on uh, on George. And uh, George, of course, has thrown a couple of interceptions, fumbled the ball a couple of times. This Apke reminds me of an old pal of mine uh, named Joe Schmidt, a really uh. ferocious football player. And that's the exact reason why the Pittsburgh Panthers are ahead by 13 points. Let's take a look at some of the first half highlights. It looked like Purdue was going to walk away with this thing very early. First of all, in the first quarter, they blocked a punt, and then this 11 yard pass play from Jeff George to Lance Scheib got the Boilermakers on the scoreboard. A good pass pattern. 
out here. And a good play by the Purdue Boilermakers. George almost falls, but it's a touchdown and seven points. And uh, now Purdue leads uh, 14 to nothing. So Jeff George connecting twice, but then Mr. Hayward, 260 pounds worth of Mr. Hayward. He's a big, strong one. That was on a fourth down play, so it was a big play for the uh, Pitt Panthers. You talked about interceptions a moment ago. You're going to see one of them now. Jeff George back to throw. Number one, Billy Owens will pick this one off 42 yards away and take it all the way in for Pitt's second score. Well, Jeff George just forced the ball in there, and there was Billy Owens on his own defense waiting for the pickoff and got seven points on the board for the Pitt Panthers. Then after a couple of field goals by Jeff Van Horn made it 20 to 14, it was Craig Hayward again. And watch this run. Very strong run from seven yards out by well, Craig Hayward. This is just desire. He found a little hole over there to the left and desire and a lot of strength and he got in Hayward did for another touchdown and Pittsburgh leads uh, by 13 points now late in the first half Purdue was driving for another score but they turned the ball over again another interception by the Pitt Panthers and they were able to run out the clock and maintain that 27 to 14 halftime lead Purdue adjustments in the third quarter well Purdue's got to get the ball going they got to start throwing shorter patterns control the ball they're not out of this game by by any means they're only 13 points behind and they can certainly come back in the second half but they got to beat that pit defense and the second half is just around the corner we'll be back with all the action this is Super Football Saturday on TNT. We're at halftime where the Pitt Panthers lead the Purdue Boilermakers 27 14. Ron, your thoughts on this first half? Well, my thoughts are number one, a guy named uh, Steve Apke, number 50, a linebacker for the Pittsburgh uh, Panthers. He really has done a great job of putting a lot of pressure on, uh, on George. And uh, George, of course, has thrown a couple of interceptions, fumbled the ball a couple of times. This Apke reminds me of an old pal of mine uh, named Joe Schmidt, a really right. ferocious football player. And that's the exact reason why the Pittsburgh Panthers are ahead by 13 points. Let's take a look at some of the first half highlights. It looked like Purdue was going to walk away with this thing very early. First of all, in the first quarter, they blocked a punt. And then this 11-yard pass play from Jeff George to Lance Scheib got the Boilermakers on the scoreboard. A good pass pattern out here. And a good play by the Purdue Boilermakers. George almost falls, but it's a touchdown and seven points. And uh, now Purdue leads uh, 14 to nothing. So Jeff George connecting twice, but then Mr. Hayward, 260 pounds worth of Mr. Hayward. He's a big, strong one. That was on a fourth down play, so it was a big play for the uh, Pitt Panthers. You talked about interceptions a moment ago. You're going to see one of them now. Jeff George back to throw. Number one, Billy Owens will pick this one off 42 yards away and take it all the way in for Pitt's second score. Well, Jeff George just forced the ball in there, and there was Billy Owens on his own defense waiting for the pickoff and got seven points on the board for the Pitt Panthers. Then after a couple of field goals by Jeff Van Horn made it 20 to 14, it was Craig Hayward again. And watch this run. Very strong run from seven yards out by well, Craig Hayward. This is just desire. He found a little hole over there to the left and just desire and a lot of strength and he got in Hayward did for another touchdown and Pittsburgh leads uh, by 13 points now late in the first half Purdue was driving for another score but they turned the ball over again another interception by the Pitt Panthers and they were able to run out the clock and maintain that 27 to 14 halftime lead Purdue adjustments in the third quarter well Purdue's got to get the ball going they got to start throwing shorter patterns control the ball they're not out of this game by by any means they're only 13 points behind and they can certainly come back in the second half but they got to beat that pit defense and the second half is just around the corner we'll be back with all the action this is super football Saturday on TNT quarter number three let's take a look back at the Big Ten players of the week from one week ago on offense Darrell Thompson a freshman from Minnesota 205 yards and four touchdowns against Bowling Green and on defense Ron Woodson who we're seeing here this afternoon what a day he had that 97 yard kickoff return and also nine tackles in the Boilermakers win over Ball State well Purdue set to receive the kickoff now Woodson is deep Van Horn approaching the football the third quarter is underway Woodson at the three yard line out to about the 25 he's snowed under there swarming the coverage yard return by the Pitt Panther and you have to swarm a guy like Rod Woodson number 26 here are the statistics in the first half 
Pittsburgh, of course, holding the ball 17 minutes and five seconds against Purdue's 12 minutes and 55 seconds. Yards rushing, minus 19. That's a big factor. Total yards, 161 to 95. And remember, Purdue had the ball for about the first five minutes of the game, so that time of possession really turned in Pitt's favor after the opening five minutes. Jeff George handing it off to James Medlock. He'll get about a yard. That's so all. It'll be second down to nine. The tackle made by Steve Apke again, number 50. He's a good one, eh? From Cincinnati, Ohio. They weren't going to start him in this football game. Uh, Mike Gottfried was a little perturbed at him after last week's game, and he didn't have any enthusiasm, and he put him down on the list. As a matter of fact, even on our list as second. Uh, uh, but yesterday he said, I think I'll play him. I can see why. There you see the numbers on Jeff George in the first half. Second down. Nine yards to go for the first down. George throwing complete to Cheney. But for very little yardage, he gained only about two before he was brought down from behind by Darrell Woods. Darrell Woods just followed Cheney right across the field. Nice little short pattern. But better blocking up front for Jeff George, and this is what they're going to have to get. Third reception, 15 yards. I'm going to go behind. Third down, about eight yards to go now for the first down. Medlock checks back in, replacing Tony Grant at one of the running back positions. Shotgun. Third down eight. At the 28 yard line. George had some time firing long downfield intended for Lance Scheib. It's incomplete. Quentin Jones back in the coverage. Jones and Washington were both there. Nobody was open. Lance Scheib ran right into them. Very poorly thrown ball. Watch this ball now. Right into the zone defense. They got a double coverage out there on Scheib, and there's no way he can complete that pass. He just he just did not throw the ball in the proper direction. Now Sean McCarthy, the freshman from Fremont, Ohio, checks in to punt. Keith Tinsley standing on his own 30-yard line. Again, a little bit off the side of his foot. And this one will roll dead, roll dead just inside the 40-yard line. Call it the 38. And that's where the Pitt Panthers will have their first possession of the second half. Again, we look at that Pitt defense. They held a Purdue Boilermaker to two yards gained on that series. And they get the ball right back. And with a guy like Conjemi. In the backfield, throwing the ball, and a guy named Charles Gledman who can really run it. They're going to keep the ball most of the time. Like I said at the beginning of the show, they they have a varied offense, and they have shown it to us, and they have done very well against this Purdue defense. Triple wing left. First down at the 38. Scales in motion. And Jimmy back to throw on first down. The pass is complete to Hurd at the 46-yard line. He gets up near midfield. It's a first down for the Panthers. Fred Strickland finally forced him out of bounds. Hurt down the field about eight yards. Just stopped and popped in the middle of the in the middle of the zone. Conjemi saw him and got it to him quickly. A great adjustment uh, by this offensive team of Pittsburgh against Purdue, and they seem to be moving the ball very quickly. Of course, that's the only only the first play, but you can generally see by the first play what kind of plays are going to come against Purdue. Triple wing left again. First and ten. Scales in motion again. And Jimmy handing the ball to Charles Gladman, who found no running room that time. Kevin Holly there to take care of Gladman. Gladman only a junior. He'll be back for one more year for the Pitt Panthers. He's a great runner. 13 carries for 34 yards today. Not having one of his best days, but that is subject to change at any time. He is always liable to break one. Just looking at Pittsburgh, one of the greatest runners I've ever seen in my life. Maybe any of us, as Tony Dorf said. Second down, 10. Now Pitt shows the shotgun formation. They're at their own 48-yard line. And Jemmy firing up the middle. The intended receiver, Bill Osborne. The pass was incomplete. Ronnie Beeks back there in the coverage for the Boilermakers. The Boilermakers blitz the 
on that shotgun play what the, what you try to do against the shotgun even though the quarterback is back seven or eight yards what you try to do is you rush him and so here's what here's what the defense is trying to do you see they got some blitzes going on Conjemi, uh they had a man to man defense back there Conjemi just could not hit his pass receiver downfield and it was well covered Conjemi by the defense of Ronnie Beach. for 99 yards third down and 10. Can Jimmy firing this one is caught and he might be gone the 30 yard line inside the 30 before Bill Osborne is brought down Rod Woodson finally made the tackle it's a first down for the Pitt Panthers Merkel Williams just could not make the play defensively he had him for about an eight yard gain it would have been fourth down but a great play uh, offensively by Billy Osborne a good throw by John Conjemi, and it's a first down again for these Pitt Panthers who are moving the ball here early in the second half against Purdue. A 19 yard gain on that pass play, giving them a first and 10 at the Purdue 29. Third quarter just underway, Pitt leading it 27 14 and driving again. You saw the concerned look in Leon Burtnett's face. Either on concerned the or line. he's perturbed. A little of both, I think. Timeout has been taken here by Pitt. So that'll stop the clock with 11 minutes 58 seconds remaining in quarter number three. And the Pitt Panthers leading by a 27 14 score. Remember Pete Van Weren back at Ross Aid Stadium. It is a first and 10 for the Pitt Panthers at the 29 yard line of Purdue. Hurd is in motion. Contemi back to throw. He's got some pressure applied. Gets rid of it. Caught by Gladman. A fine reception. Gladman inside the 20. He is in the end zone. Touchdown. What a, a great catch by Charles Gladman. And he took it all the way. Purdue had the blitz on. And Contemi took the pressure through the pass out to Charles Gladman. Nobody in front of him. It was a little bit of a screen. Watch this screen to the left. Watch the great pressure put on by the Purdue Boilermakers. Conjemi throws the ball out. Gladman catches it with one hand. He's down the field and nobody even in front of him. A touchdown. Bill Chirpak was out there in front of him. Didn't even have to make a block. And it was six points very quickly for, for the Pitt Panthers. And the Jeff Van Horn extra point. Has given the Pitt Panthers a 20 point lead. It is now 34 14 over Purdue. Now, this game has really turned around for Leon Burtnett. Now, watch Chuck Conjemi. Watch Conjemi go back. He let, they let all the players come in because it's a screen to the left. And Gladman wide open out there. What a great catch he made. And then he's down the sideline because nobody's in front of him. Conjemi really having now a, a good day and he, you know he's only second to Dan Marino uh, in in career passing at Pittsburgh so you know he's he's right up amongst the, the the really good players uh, in in the uh, uh, in the collegiate ranks. Well now the Purdue Boilermakers have their work cut out for them they trail by 20 points 34 14 with 11 50 remaining in the third quarter. Well the Boilermaker defense are the ways the one that's going to have to start playing because this this offensive team of Pittsburgh has just been eating them up a lifetime score Michigan still having their problems with Oregon State it's Michigan 14 Oregon State 12 now at the half and in the second quarter Ohio State leads Colorado but only by a three nothing count good kick that time and Woodson is going to keep it right there the ball will come out to the 20 yard line well the Boilermakers get another chance First down at the 20 yard line. But of course, the big defensive play again by uh, by Pittsburgh. Uh, Purdue got the ball here in the second half. The, the Pittsburgh defense held them with three plays, got the ball back for their offense. And if you keep that defensive team on the on the field like uh, Pittsburgh has uh, against Purdue, then they're going to score a lot of points. Purdue now has to get the ball moving up the field. They got a minus 19 yards rushing. That has been a problem for the Boilermakers. They have been unable to run the football. Jeff George back to throw. That one is caught. And out of bounds at the 37 yard line. Gary Richard making the stop on Lance Shive. A correction, Shive. that's Ted Geloff. Yep. Yeah. Teddy down the field. A good play, good throw. Now he threw to the right man that time. And defensively, Gary Richard. 
with a tackle but not until Purdue gets a first down on the 37 yard line. 17 yard gain first down. Five plays the last scoring drive 62 yards a minute and 29 seconds 29 yard TD reception. George back to throw on first and 10. He's got his big tight end open Brad Schumacher. Billy Owens making the tackle on Schumacher, who is 6'7, 254 pounds. Billy Madison, Owens didn't Illinois. really want to tackle him, but you see him shove him to the ground. Instead of a tackle, he shoved him. That's a four yard gain, second down six. Big number 85, Schumacher. The ball at the Purdue 41. The Boilermakers trailing 34 14. A little over 11 minutes remaining in the third quarter. In motion. Yellow the intended receiver picked off by Gary Richard. Uh oh, that's all she wrote. Gary Richard with a touchdown. The second interception run back by the Pitt Panthers today. 46 yards. Jeff George trying to go to the well once too often. Ted Gellum was not open. A good play by Gary Richards picked it off got the ball from Teddy Gallup and went right down the sideline for another six points. Watch this good play by Gary Richards. He's out there waiting and what's happening to Jeff George is he ain't looking these defensive players away. He's looking right at his primary receiver and he's throwing it out there and that's exactly what Gary Richards was waiting for. He was watching his eyes. He watched him right in. He intercepted the pass in for six points. The extra point is good. And now the Pitt Panthers lead 41 to 14. Almost impossible for these Purdue Boilermakers. So the Pitt Panthers turning this thing into a route. We'll be right back. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. Here's a replay of the interception by Gary Richards off Jeff George. Ted Gelov is out there, but watch the good play and the great angle by our by our, our our television cameras and just a super play by number six Gary Richards down the sideline six points for the Pitt Panthers and they lead it now 41 to 14 with 1057 remaining in the third quarter. Rod Woodson awaits the kickoff he's been waiting a lot of kickoffs the last couple of quarters and there's only there's still 11 minutes left here in the third period. There's Van Horn's kick again it carries to the end zone Van Horn's done a good job booting that ball today Woodson's going to run this one out and he'll get out to the 20 21 yard line. Not a bad return he was about three yards deep in the end zone. We have some scores North Carolina and Florida State tied in the fourth period. Michigan 14 to 12 in the third period over Oregon State maybe they're looking for Florida State. Long Beach State seven Western Michigan seven in the second period. Florida leading Alabama seven to nothing in the second period. And that's our update. And here it is 41 14 pit. A surprise. First down at the 21 yard line. Jeff George. In some trouble. Now gets rid of it incomplete. Matt Shive, the intended receiver. Good for him. Now he's learning. When you're caught, you got no place to throw the ball. Jeff George, no one was open. He got some pressure on him. He threw the ball on the ground. At least it's not an interception. You got another, you got another play to go. The three interceptions of Jeff George have really hurt. Two he of them had, run back for touchdowns. He had three last week. Yes, he did. That number, though, you can expect to get a lot better as he gets more and more playing experience. Second down, 10. This one is caught by Cheney out at the 24 yard line. He's brought down by Daryl Woods. And we have a penalty. So the officials talk over the penalty. I saw where the flag came from, but I didn't understand where it came from. Face mask against. Pittsburgh. I thought 
run in that first half one big turning point in that first half and it may turn out to be a turning point in the game Purdue got a big break on a face mask penalty and they had the ball down where they were going to maybe get at least three points out of it. Foul. and then that face big interception gave the ball back to Pitt. And an automatic Gary Richards made a great down. interception here he comes a little face mask uh, call right here on uh, Jerry Cheney after he catches the ball right here you see the hand come in grab the face mask turn the head bulldog him it'll be a first down at the 40 yard line George back to draw on first down finds Cheney Cheney will get about three yards brought down at the 43 yard line by Steve Atke big number 50. You know the one thing I've noticed yards. about this Purdue Boilermaker team they don't have great speed. I mean even Cheney who is a who is a tailback who just caught the ball there he was out running one of the linebackers and the linebacker caught up with him. We have another penalty against Pittsburgh. Well, the Boilermakers will take advantage of this. The ball right now resting on the Purdue 43. Another conference by the referees. James Garvey in the white hat is the referee. Jim Augustin, the umpire. Howard Eckert, the headlinesman. John Ask, the line judge. Tom Tomzik, the field judge. Bob Colburn, the side judge. Harold Mitchell, the back judge. It will be a big one. Another 15 yarder against the Panthers. Well, maybe they'll get it in. Personal foul. Defense. Automatic first foul. Via the penalty. They can't throw it. They can't run it. So maybe they're going to take it via the penalty. Well they have gotten 30 yards on two penalties. To give Mike, them a first down at the 45 yard line. Mike Godfrey on the sideline should be very happy with the performance of his team here. 41 14 pin. Shot to to go. In the third quarter, Jeff George looking long for Geloff. Out of bounds, incomplete. It'll be second down and ten. Well covered. Keith Tinsley back there in the coverage. Yeah, he was. The Not sun very... has broken through here at Ross Aid Stadium, but right Not... now it's shining only on the Panthers. <laughs> You're right, partner. Ten minutes left here in the third period. Panthers lead. 41 to 14. We got some more scores. Ohio State three to nothing over Colorado in the second period. Rutgers 17-6 over Cincinnati in the second period. Second down 10 at the pit 45. And a timeout will be taken here. Jeff George didn't like what he saw. I think what happened is Purdue calls time. He called a he called an audible, and all of a sudden, and that audible. It wasn't supposed to go against the defense he saw in front of him. He said, okay, I'm going to call a timeout. It's a very difficult position for any freshman to play his first year at college football, Anyone but particularly. It's a very difficult position. Particularly a quarterback. Sure, especially if you're going to throw the ball and, and do any, a lot of things. Here's a score, Indiana State 3. Who was that other one? I Iowa State. This. Iowa State, yeah. Navy and Indiana tied the first three at 7-7. Seven to seven. I couldn't see past you, partner. I saw, I saw Indiana State. Couldn't see Iowa State. Of course, we had Iowa State last week against Iowa. Now that's a game they expected to win, the Indiana yeah. State game. And they're trailing 3 0. 41 14, Pitt leading Purdue. We've got 10 minutes exactly left in quarter number three. And the Boilermakers have the ball second and 10 at the Pitt 45 yard line. They're going to have to make a move on this ground, on this drive. There's Mike Gottfried over on the pit sidelines. He's a cousin of Jim Harbaugh, the Michigan quarterback, yeah. who we'll be seeing next week. An Ohio boy. Okay, second down, ten. Shive in motion. Jeff George back to throw on second down under some pressure runs away from one man fires it long downfield out of bounds when he made the reception was Lance Scheib Keith Tinsley and back again a lot of pressure Daryl Woods the linebacker putting the pressure on Jeff George running for his life George now 16 out of 31 for 141 yards three interceptions two touchdowns third and ten and two touchdowns for them on those interceptions. That's right. 
Nine fifty four left third quarter. Purdue four out of ten in converting third down plays. George back to throw under pressure again. Runs away from it. Fires downfield intended for Scheib incomplete. But again the pressure applied Tony Woods number 90 was right on top of Jeff George when he got rid of that ball and Walter Johnson was going to lay the footwork after, <laughs> after Tony Woods got him down but Jeff George got it away again he threw it right in the middle of the defense so Sean McCarthy checks in to do the punting the freshman from Fremont Ohio Back deep for Pittsburgh is Keith Tinsley. He is standing on his own 10 yard line. McCarthy will try to drop this one inside the 10. Then it's going to make it all the way to the end zone. So the Pitt Panthers will put it in play at their own 20 yard line with a 41 to 14 lead. And with 9 minutes 41 seconds remaining in quarter number three. Pittsburgh leading Purdue. We can update you on another couple of scores here. Indiana now leads Navy 17 7 in the second quarter. Hurd with a reception at the 33 yard line. Mike Weaver back in the coverage. West Virginia plays Pittsburgh next week. Right now they trail Maryland 10 0 in the first half. And at the half now, Ohio State leading Colorado 10 0. Simple little out pattern by Hurd. And of course, right now, John Conjemi. Number 15 from Pittsburgh is just eating this Purdue defense alive. A 12 yard gain on that last pass to Hosea Hurd, a first down at the 32 yard line. The fullback, Tom Brown, got maybe a yard. No more than that. Kevin Holly there to make the stop for Purdue. Big number 99. We have a moment now. Let's pause five seconds for station identification. WPTT TV, Channel 22, Pittsburgh. Tom Brown has now carried the ball five times for 16 yards. He lost a yard that time at second down 11. Michael Stewart goes out wide left. He's been in there for Reggie Williams who injured his leg in the first half. Jemmy back to throw. Another fine one-handed catch by Charles Gladman. A penalty marker is dropped. Gerald Williams back there to make the stop for Purdue. We'll have to take a look at that penalty marker. Again, they came on a rollout, Con Jemmy did, and threw it back on a screen to number 32, Charlie Gladman. It was complete, but they have people down the field. What I mean, people down the field, that's ineligible receivers down the field for Pittsburgh, and it will be a penalty. And I think a loss of Illegal down. receiver downfield declaring third down. Well, they declined it. But I think that also carries, I think that also carries a loss of down if you have an illegal pass receiver downfield. So they actually lost ground by uh, by taking the play. So it is third down now and eight the ball at the 34 yard line. Hey one thing about Charles Gladman we haven't seen that much of him as far as receiving passes this afternoon but the two he's caught he has made great <laughs> receptions on he's got good hands. <laughs> back to throw. He's got some pressure being applied Kevin Holly is going to bring it down back at the 33 yard line. Kevin Holly, 6'3", 257 pounds senior from Washington, Pennsylvania. He's really been up for this game because he is a Pennsylvanian and he wants very badly to beat Pitt. Chases this all the way from the left side of the field to the right side of the field as Conjemi gets out of the trap. But there he is, big number 99, Kevin Holly making the tackle. Now John Rasp is in to do the punting for the Pitt Panthers. Hasn't punted very much today. Rod Woodson awaiting back at his own 20 yard line. A good high long kick by Rasp all the way to the 15 yard line. Woodson losing his footing at the 18. And that's one of the few instances today we've seen about how slick that field is. A 50 yard kick for John Rasp. Well I think the field held up 
for the test engineers here at Purdue. The prescription field. And we had three and three quarter inches of rain on it last night. We may get a little more this afternoon, but three and three quarter inches of rain, and that's the first slip we've seen all day. Seven minutes, 36 seconds remaining, third quarter. The Boilermakers trailing 41 14. And Jeff George, the freshman from Indianapolis, will try to get something started here. The ball on the 18 yard line. George flipping it forward to Cheney, and Cheney with a good gain out to the 30 yard line. First down. Troy Washington finally made the tackle along with John Carter. That's a pretty safe play. That's one of those little flip passes uh, to your halfback. And if he drops the ball, it's a forward pass anyway. It's not a lateral, so it's a. Uh, uh, so it's a forward pass and a completed pass for uh, Jeff George. That was a close one though. He could complete that one very easily. A 12 yard gain first down at the 30. That's his fourth catch too. First down for the Boilermakers at their own 30. George back to throw again. This one is completed to Tony Grant the junior from Jeffersonville Indiana. Gaining about eight yards out to the 38 yard line before Keith Tinsley brings him down for the Pitt Panthers. Brad was open on a little screen pass left. An eight yard gain. It'll be second down and two. 41 14 our score. A little screen. Tony Grant, they let those defenders come in. Tony Grant turns around. Ball's right there. Good throw by Jeff George and a nice little pickup. And a good tackle defensively. Second down, a long two. George firing for that shot and a very nice reception made by Shive at the 45-yard line of the Pitt Panthers. Ezekiel Gadsden back there on the coverage. You know, you know when you got a freshman like Jeff George, you got to keep going with him. Lance Shive on the sideline. Well thrown ball between the zone. Good catch. One hander. Wow. Good concentration there. Yes, Mike sir. Shive. First down, First down Purdue. The 45 yard line of pitch. 6.09 remaining, third quarter. On first down, George under pressure. Another fine catch. This one by James Medlock. And Medlock. Gets down to the 26 yard line and Ron Kramer we saw right there that Jeff George indeed is learning what to do. With oh, yeah. oh yeah. You're just, you're just keep defense. it coming at him. The defense came at him strong. He slipped off the shovel pass to James Midlock number 34 right up the middle 19 yard gain and that's his second catch now for 24 yards. So it's another Boilermaker first down at the 27 yard line of the Panthers. George back to throw firing for Shive, and this one is picked off intercepted again number six Gary Richard with his second interception of the day well he just can't throw the ball into that defensive guy right there he was well covered Gary Richard was right there covering Lance Shive. Jeff the fourth George. interception of Jeff George he just whipped it right into his hands yeah he should be a little bit disgusted. So another Purdue drive is stopped by the turnover. There you see the numbers on Jeff George. All the anguish will be gone on Jeff George's face if he has a good day next week. Right now he's not having one of those good days. A good play by Gary Richard, but a very poorly thrown ball by Jeff George. First down now at the nine yard line for the Pitt Panthers. Billy Osborne in motion. Gladman comes out wide right. Tom Jimmy handing the ball to the fullback Tom Brown and has very little running room. Ronnie Beats number three, the strong safety, came in to get him. Pittsburgh defensively just eating up that offense of the Purdue Boilermakers and scoring 41 points against Purdue's 14 here in the third period with five minutes left to go in the game. The big turnovers were the big plays made by the defensive players on this uh, Pitt Panther team. 4.58 the time left in the third quarter. And I think the inexperience of Jeff George and Leon Burtnett said he's going to he's going to throw some bad passes but boys but he's only a freshman and I'm going with him and he's my man. We got a timeout on the field. 
After a loss of a yard, it'll be second down 11. Pitt taking the timeout. They will have only one timeout remaining now. When you have 41 points on the board, you don't need timeout. <laughs> very true. Well, I know Mike Gottfried's got to be very pleased with the way his team has played here this afternoon. He felt they played well enough to win their first two games against Maryland and North Carolina State. Yeah, they did. I, I watched the game against Maryland, and they were leading Maryland. Uh, Maryland came back late in the football game to, to win the football game, 10 to 7. And uh, against NC State, the, they were leading 14 to nothing. And I, I don't really see how anybody can score 14 points against this defense that the Pitt Panthers have. I mean, they are good. This is a good football team. I'll tell you one thing Mike Gottfried told us yesterday that I thought was a very good point. He was talking about players coming back from last year's team after a disappointing season last year trying to do too much too soon trying to turn everything around in one afternoon trying to make last season go away by just playing one good game and he said you have to have a little more patience than that yeah and uh, of course uh, Mike Godfrey is, is one of those good coaches and he loves the tradition of Pittsburgh and Pittsburgh has that great tradition behind him so they'll be back I'm sure they're going to be a, a, a team to contend with this year second down 11. The ball at the eight yard line. And Jimmy back to throw, firing up the middle, incomplete. The ball dropped by Bill Osborne. Oh, right through Billy Osborne's hands. He was wide open in the center. Not much coverage by the Purdue defenders. 29 to nothing. Iowa leading Northern Illinois. Auburn 21, East Carolina in the second. Notre Dame three, Michigan State nothing in the first. Oklahoma 14, Minnesota nothing in the first. And here at West Lafayette, Indiana, it is 41-14, Pitt leading Purdue with 4.41 remaining third quarter. Third down 11. The ball on the eight-yard line. A fine catch by Charlie Scales at the 17 yard line. Not enough for the first down. He now that to was about good the 19. Catch. That was a good catch. Chuck Scales, a senior from West Mifflin, Pennsylvania. Charlie Scales was wide open. If uh, Conjemi could have got it to him, he'd have made some big, large yards. But Purdue will get the ball back, and we'll see Jeff George back in this lineup. John Rasp, the freshman from Irwin, Pennsylvania, has done a fine job punting this afternoon. He hasn't been called on that often, but when he has, he's boomed a couple of big ones, a 50-yarder last half. All except for one in the first period, his first one that was blocked. Another boomer, Rod Woodson, back at his 35-yard line. Still on his feet, a good return by Woodson, all the way down to the 43-yard line. Good step out of bounds. They're going to they're going to bring it back to the 46 yard line of Purdue. Yeah, stepped out. Referee caught it on the sideline. So the Boilermakers will have it again in pretty good field position. First down at their own 46. With the score 41 14 in favor of Pittsburgh. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. First down Purdue. They're at their own 46 yard line. George back to throw again. The pass is caught by Cheney across midfield. Gets to about the 46 yard line of Pittsburgh before Steve Hapke made the tackle. Jerry Cheney, a junior from Port Arthur, Texas, played at Compton California Community College for a couple of years. They go into that double wing, and uh, Cheney comes across from the left side, and James Medlock from the right side, and they just cross in the middle. They're wide open underneath the linebackers. The linebackers now are dropping back deep to prevent that long pass play. Seven yard game. It'll be second down and three. Shive in motion. George fakes the handoff. Now fires and completes it to Tony Grant. It's a first down for Purdue. Keith Tinsley back in the coverage. Fullback Grant out on the sideline. First Reggie down. Williams. Injured in the first half has returned on crutches. Not a good sign for Pittsburgh. He's one of it looks like he's in a cast. Very valuable receivers. And he made that big play on their first score, a 33-yard reception down to the five-yard line. First down for the Boilermakers at the pit 43. Almost exclusively a passing game for Purdue. They've run the ball very, very little. And when they have, they haven't gained many yards at all on the ground. 
George back to throw again. Here they come. Down he goes. Tony Woods. 6'4", 240 pounds, senior from Newark, New Jersey. Well, the guy that got him out of the thicket, though, was old Steve Apke again. He's a tyrant. He came up the middle. Number 50, watch him come. Here he comes right up the middle on a blitz, Steve Apke, and put him right into the hands of Tony Woods, who made the sack on Jeff George and a 15-yard loss. That's the fifth sack for the Pitt Panthers. Good for 56 yards in losses. A 15-yard loss that time. Second down, 25. George back to throw on second and long. Firing long downfield for Geloff. Incomplete. Quinton Jones back in the coverage. Again, nobody was open. Penalty markers dropped back near midfield. That's got to be somebody on the line of scrimmage over illegal pass receiver. That's what it is. <laughs> so the ineligible man downfield. George now 21 for 39. 195 yards. Four you, interceptions. Did you count those interception return yardage? I think that counts for the other team. Wow. He's young. He'll overcome this. He'll be a great one. We had an ineligible receiver downfield by the offense. Decline. Third down. Third down and 24 yards to go for the first down. I always thought that an ineligible receiver downfield uh, also carried a loss of down. It's a rule I have to look for. Third and 24. Complete to Shive, but only for a few yards. Right at midfield, Shive is forced out of bounds. Did you see on that play, Pittsburgh only rushed two men defensively? They had nine men back on defense. When they call it a nickel, that means there's five backs in the game. What do they call that when there's nine backs in the it's game? It's called nine pence. <laughs> Keith Tinsley awaiting the kick from Sean McCarthy. A minute 19 to go third quarter. He feels the low snap and gets off a good kick end over end. He's going to bounce on the 10. He's going to bounce inside the five yard line and roll dead at the three. So a good kick there by Sean McCarthy. And the Pitt Panthers will have the ball again, but all the way back on their own three yard line. Well, Leon Burtonett's going to have some fun in his film session after this game is over. That was a 46 just, yard kick by McCarthy. You got to just let this thing go. And now Pittsburgh has it again. Their hands are on the ball with, with about a minute and four seconds left here in the third period. They're leading. Pittsburgh is 41 to 14 over Purdue. And we'll see what Ken Jemmy tries way back here. Get me back to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Tom Brown, the fullback. Will gain about a yard or two out to about the four yard line. Chris Kiebers in on the stop. Seven carries for 16 yards now for Brown. Now you Pittsburgh, see the time remaining in the third quarter. This Pittsburgh football team certainly has uh, done a great job. We can update you on a couple of scores. Indiana now leading Navy 31 7 in the second quarter. Wow. And Michigan State has taken a 7 3 lead over Notre Dame in the first quarter. Remember that great game we had down at Indiana last year? Oh, that we was did, a great uh, one, wasn't it? Indiana, yeah, Navy. Indiana Navy was a super game. Up and down the field, 38-35. Indiana won it. This will probably be the final play of the third quarter. Hayward, who has scored two touchdowns today, gets it out to about the long down line. Gerald Williams and Merkel Williams making the tackle for Purdue. And that will be the final play of the third quarter as time expires. So they'll move the ball down to the other end of the field. We have one quarter remaining there at ross -Aid Stadium in West Lafayette, Indiana. It has been all Pittsburgh after an early spurt by Purdue. 41-14 Panthers.
Portions of today's game are being brought to you by Ford and your local Ford dealer who invite you to see the 1986 Ford cars and trucks. Have you driven a Ford lately? Along with Ron Kramer, Pete Van Weren back at ross Aid Stadium. Fourth quarter about to begin. Pittsburgh with a big lead, 41-14. Score just in, uh, Florida State and North Carolina tied 10-10. Derek Schmidt missed a 36 yard field goal with about 10 seconds left. So Michigan will be playing Florida State next week in Ann Arbor. Here's another one. It is third down, about five yards to go for the first down. The ball on the nine yard line. And Demi in some trouble. He's going to try to run for the first down, and he'll almost get it. We'll see where they mark that. It's at about the 14 yard line. Ronnie Beeks pulled him down from behind. That is a first down. They are going to bring the chains out to be sure. It looked like to me it was a first down. Good play by Kunjemi getting out of that pocket. They had a good rush on him. So we'll look at this measurement. It is a first down for the Pitt Panthers. So Conjemi scrambles for a first down. And the Panthers retain possession. The ball on the 14 yard line. Osborne in motion. To Gladwin. Gladwin looking for running room outside. Cannot get around. Gerald Williams, number 47. Uh, Gladman, they defense him very well today, but they haven't been able to do anything against the passing of John Conjemi. And of course, they haven't been able to do anything against the defense. Gladman now with 14 carries for 36 yards. So the Boilermakers have done a good job harnessing the 1,000 yard rusher, Charles Gladman. No gain on that last carry. Second down and ten. Long count by Conjemi. And down he goes. He got down before anybody got to him. He's a smart quarterback. Some of these quarterbacks get smarter all the time. He saw Chris Kiever's coming, <laughs> 6'3", 259 pounds, said, no, thank you. Hello. I'm going to take a little dive here. A loss of a couple of yards. It'll be third and let's call it 12. 13 minutes, 25 seconds remaining. 41-14, Pitt Panthers leading Purdue. Purdue really hasn't been able to do a dog on thing since those first two drives. They got 14 points. They were leading 14 to nothing early in the first period. All in the first five minutes of the game. Third down and 12. And Jimmy has plenty of time. Pass batted down, almost picked off by Merkel Williams, number 42. And the Panthers will have to kick. And Jimmy tried to throw that ball. Merkel Williams was jumped up in the air, hit him right in the bird basket. Well, Purdue's going to get the ball back in very good field position. Rod Woodson is standing at about his own 47-yard line to field this punt from John Rasp. He had one block early in the game, but since then he's kicked extremely well. They are coming again, and he's not going to get this one off, and Purdue is going to have the football at the 10-yard line. The Boilermaker sent everybody. And Gerald Williams making the tackle on John Rasp, who simply didn't have enough time to get his foot into that one. Well, Wilfong, Robert Wilfong, really came in strong over here on the on the right hand side. He came in and he forced him out of that out of that uh, punting position, and a good play back there by Gerald Williams, and it'll be Purdue's ball, first and ten. The ball is just outside the ten yard line. See what Jeff George can do in this position. Shive is in motion. George rolling right. The pass is caught by Jerry Cheney. 
for about a two yard gain. Darrell Woods making the tackle for Pittsburgh. Cheney on a slant out. And we had Ted Gillow trying to clear it out in a very short gainer. What a pretty good throw by quarterback Jeff George, who has had four interceptions today. We know he's not doing all as great as we thought he would do, but we certainly hope Gary Bonin, his roommate who is in the hospital in Indiana, Indianapolis, is doing doing well, and we wish him well from here at TBS. Second down to nine. Cheney in motion. George throwing for Cheney has him at the five. He gets to the four-yard line, and Keith Tinsley brings him down. Good tackle by Tinsley. Hard hitting Keith Tinsley. That defense of Pittsburgh is very, very impressive. The Boilermakers need three yards for the first down, four yards for the touchdown. A five yard gain on that last play. And Leon Burtonett sticking with Jeff George. He says, You're going to learn the hard way, my friend. 11 minutes, 40 seconds remaining in the game. Two tight ends are in there. George back to throw. Firing in the end zone. Incomplete intended for Ted Geloff. He Most got his hands on the ball but couldn't hang on to it. Gary Richards back there again doing a good job defensively. And Gary Richards at least gets his hands up in front of Teddy Geloff. And it goes incomplete. Gary Richards has had a very good game. Two interceptions. See what happened to Ted Geloff. Instead of trying to catch the ball with his hands, he tried to catch it in his body, and it hit his shoulder pad and bounced off. You got to catch the ball in your hand. So that sets up a fourth down and three yards for the first down, four yards for the touchdown. Purdue's going to go for it. They trail 41-14. The field goal would do them no good here. No, no. George firing for Geloff in the end zone. And he's going to be. Covered by yellow flags. Yes, sir. Keith Number Tinsley 20. Hit him a little too early. Grabbed him around the waist. Gillov was in the end zone. It was an alley ooper. And Keith Tinsley. We'll watch it over here in the right corner of the end zone. The ball was thrown up by Jeff George. And you can see he's got him before the ball was there. And it's a penalty against the Pittsburgh Panthers, and it'll be. A fourth down Head play. To the first defense and an first automatic down. first down. First down in the end zone. The ball at the two yard line. No doubt about that call. Two tight ends in there again, both Barry and Schumacher. Medlock. Did he get in? I don't Not think so. Quite. Stopped at about the one yard line. Had a pretty good hole over on that left side. One of the few times in this half that Purdue has run the football. Well, they really haven't had the opportunity when you're behind like they are right now, 41 to 14. You got to get it the quickest way into the end zone, and that's through the air. It'll be second down and less than a yard to go for the touchdown. Tony Grant and Jerry Cheney are the running backs lining up in the eye behind Jeff George. The pitch is to Gary Cheney. He's in for the touchdown. Gary Cheney got in, but Steve Atkey again really made a ferocious tackle right on the goal line. And now Purdue has 20 points on the scoreboard. Here it comes again. Nice little run out here to the right by Jerry Cheney, but look at number 50. He's right there making the tackle. Just barely getting in a one-yard TD run. First touchdown since the first period by the Purdue Boilermakers. Jonathan Briggs will try to get the 21st point on the board for the Boilermakers. It's a fake. They're going to go for two, and it's incomplete. The holder, Lance Scheib, trying to find someone open in the end zone, was unable to. So the two-point conversion attempt is no good. And with 10 minutes, 41 seconds remaining in the game, it's Pitt 41, Purdue 20. This is Super Football Saturday on TN. 10 minutes, 41 seconds remaining in the game. Pitt leading at 41-20. 
And we're ready now for the Purdue kickoff. Jonathan Briggs. You know, I don't like to say this, but you know, there's 10 minutes left in a football game. And I've seen more than three touchdowns scored in a football game oh, yes. in a 10 minute span. I mean, it looks like right now Pittsburgh is going to just totally kill uh, uh, Purdue, but you never can tell. Here's the kickoff. And good, a good one. Strong kick by Briggs carrying into the end zone. Keith Tinsley brings it out. Loses the football. It's up for grabs. It's been recovered by the Pitt Panthers. You see what I mean, partner? Oh, that was close. Wow. A pretty good return by Tinsley, but almost a very costly one. Two minutes, 15 seconds to go 11 yards. It took six plays. The one-yard touchdown run by Jerry Cheney. If Purdue gets that ball and gets it into the end zone, that's only two touchdowns behind, and that's not really bad in a game like this where you're throwing the ball all over the place. The Panthers will put it in play at the 24-yard line. Well, here's a big test for the Boilermaker defense. They'd like to hold him right here and get that ball back. And Demi heading off to Gladman. Gladman will get all the way by yard. That ball is loose, and I think Purdue got this one. They did. They got Gladman this one. Had the football. Brad Strickland, number 48. Don't go away. You recall last year's game. Here's the handoff. The number 32, Charles Gladman. He struggles for yards, but a great play. Defensively by Freddie Strickland, strips the ball. Purdue gets it. First and 10 on the 25. 10 minutes, 26 seconds remaining. 41-20, Purdue leads it. Or Pitt leads it, rather, but Purdue with excellent field position again after recovering the fumble. George back to throw on first down. Firing downfield. Intercepted. Quinton Jones. He stepped out of bounds back at the 37-yard line. The fifth interception of the day for the Pitt Panthers. Well, let's look at this one very carefully because Ted Geloff came out here trying to run an out pattern. Jeff George threw it out to him. But Quentin Jones was there because Teddy Gella fell to the ground and it was clear sailing for Quentin Jones up the sideline. You watch and see here Gella falls on the ground and he anticipated the throw Jeff George did and it actually could have been could have been a, uh, a completion only unfortunately it was intercepted by Quentin Jones and went up the sideline. We can't blame Jeff George for that one. So the Pitt Panthers with their fifth interception of the afternoon have the ball back on their own 36 yard line. Ten minutes 17 seconds remaining. Tom Brown the fullback. Gaining about five yards. Mark Foster, number 31, the free safety, making the stop. Straight ahead. Time clicking off the clock. Ten minutes left. Pittsburgh leading 41 to 20. Second down and four. Call it a six yard gain for Brown out to the 42. Mike Gottfried. Hoping to win his first game as the head coach at Pitt. Brown again has some running room this time out across midfield. He lost the ball, but it was after the whistle. Marco Williams making the tackle. Good job by the referee. They'll mark the ball at the Purdue 48 yard line. Tommy Brown, one of those fullbacks. That is a blocker. Quinton Jones, who just made that last pass interception. First down for the Panthers. Brown again. And again for about four yards. As I was mentioning, Tommy Brown, who blocks for Charles Gladman most of the time, getting a lot of, a lot of running chance today. Let's update you on some other scores now. 
Michigan leading but only by five in the fourth quarter Oregon State giving them all they can handle Central Michigan a winner today over Bowling Green. Iowa rolling for the second straight week. Good football team Iowa. Auburn way out in front early. Second down about seven yards to go for the first down call it six. The ball is loose but can falls on it back at the forty nine yard line. Play getting a bit sloppy here in the fourth period. Pittsburgh leading 41 to 20, but fumbling the ball all over the place. Michigan State in the end now leads Notre Dame in the second period 10 to 3. That's always a dog fight. The ball marked back at the 49 yard line where Kajemi recovered that fumble. It's third down 11. Eight minutes remaining in the game. The Panthers lead the Boilermakers 41 20. Chuck scales in motion. Pongeli back to throw on third and long, and he's going to be dropped by Kevin Holly, who has his second sack of the day. Holly beat the center. Number 61, Eddie Miller, got around. Made the sack on John Jimmy. It'll be fourth down at 20 yards. And Jimmy feeling that one. Well, you would be too. I mean, oh, Miller's only about uh, <laughs> here he is, big number 99. Holly, only about 280 pounds. John Rasp in to do the punting. Rod Woodson waits back at his own 10-yard line. 7:15 in the time left. Get a real good one off this time. It goes out of bounds at the 22 yard line. Well, Rasp is just a little bit afraid to kick the ball. He's had two of them already blocked. One blocked and the other one running away. 7 0 the time left in the game at Ross Aid Stadium in West Lafayette, Indiana. There's your score. We'll be right back. Seven minutes, one second, the time left in the game. Well, they're still here. Those are the friends and relatives of Jeff George. You know, if things keep going like this, this uh, stadium certainly is going to empty out, but not those people who really have a great feeling for Jeff George. First down at the 21 yard line. From the shotgun. The pass is completed. And this will go for a good gain to Tony Grant. All the way out to the 36 yard line. Jerry Olsofsky making the stop for the Panthers. Wide open in the middle from the shotgun. For first down. They keep it going. It's the only way that Jeff George can learn. He's going to wind up today with a lot of yardage, as you can see. He's thrown 46 passes today, 26 completions, 236 yards. But the five interceptions and five sacks have really hurt. He's already in the record books. And he's not through yet. Another fine play by Gary Richard, the right cornerback. Boy, he's had a good day. Yeah, Dale Samuels, though, had six interceptions back in 1950. We were with him last night. Last night, he's the assistant athletic director here at Purdue. Of course, he's probably saying, oh, boy, let's get this kid going. Get one more interception. Get me in the books with him. Second down and 10 at the 35 yard line. The most passes ever attempted in a game by a Purdue quarterback 55. Jim Everett and Scott Campbell share that mark. The completion to Gallop at midfield. Gallop to the 39 yard line. That's about the first tackle or the first play that I've seen Gary Richards beat on clearly. Gellaw beat him out there on a turn in and a good throw by Jeff George. He's learning shotgun. Here he comes. Good arm. Puts it right out to Teddy Gellaw. Gellaw, the tackle is missed by number six, Gary Richards. And Gellaw gets some really good yards until he's brought down by Billy Owens. It's a first down. 6.04 the time left. The ball at the 39 yard line of Pittsburgh. From the shotgun, Jeff George has got a man open right shy, and he dropped the 
ball at the 20-yard line. Lance Scheib wide open. He's upset with himself. Again, Lance Scheib, he tried to catch the ball in the breadbasket instead of with the hands. He was wide open, ran a good down-and-in pattern. He was wide open. Jeff George hit him perfectly, and Scheib could not handle it. So it'll be a second and ten now from the 39. 554 remaining. 41-20, pit leading. 27 for 49 now for Jeff George. And he's back to throw for the 50th time. This one is completed to James Medlock. But for very little yardage, only a couple of yards before Tony Woods made the tackle for Pitt. Tony Woods was waiting, waiting for Medlock on that little shuffle pass up the front middle. Medlock short game, three yards. Rod Woodson now checks into the Purdue offense. He comes out wide right. He'll be covered by Quentin Jones. George back to throw. And for the sixth time today, Jeff George is brought down. Walter Johnson from Pahokee, Florida. Pahokee, big water. 6'2", 255-pound senior. And that's a half a dozen sacks and five interceptions. Oh, he's having a tough day. I'll tell you what, it's great schoolwork, though. Watch number 59 come in here. Big Walter Johnson, he's right on top of the quarterback, Jeff George. 71 yards and losses on the six sacks. And five interceptions. Sean McCarthy almost had that punt blocked, but got off a good one. And the Boilermakers trying to down it. Penalty markers down. <laughs> Did you that see looked that like ball? a volleyball game. I thought they were going to spike it here pretty soon off the heads off the shoulder pads. And I think the referee called it into the end zone and it'll come out to the 20 yard line. Let's see Watch how many ball. people hit this ball. Illegal batting the ball. One, two, in the, in the head. It's a touchback. Three, touchback. four in the head again. Five, six, seven. <laughs> Finally, finally downed on the three-yard line, but it was illegally batted in the end zone, so Pittsburgh will take over on the 20. But those are fun plays, and that's really what football is out of all about, is having a good time, and I'm sure these kids are. We've got four minutes, 28 seconds remaining in the game. Pittsburgh leads at 41-20. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. Pittsburgh has the ball on their own 20-yard line, and we're beginning now to see some... Backup players enter the game. This is the big fullback Craig Hayward who's had a good afternoon. He has scored two touchdowns. He gained about a yard there. Bill Gilday. When you say big, tackle. you mean big, don't you? 260 pounds. Has two touchdowns. A whole new offensive line in there now for Pitt. Chris Getz is in at left tackle. Bob Sign at left guard. Chip Bakowskis is the center. Dean Caliguire is the right guard. Randy Dixon stays in there at right tackle. I guess Mike Guthrie at this point really feels as though he's got a win leading 41 to 20 over Purdue. Second down 10. Three minutes 49 seconds remaining. Now Jimmy giving to Hayward again and he will make it out to about the 25 yard line dragging a couple of Boilermakers along with him. He just carries people. Doesn't he? That one touchdown he made uh, from seven yards out uh, in the second period it was just his own personal effort getting it into the end zone on that frame of 260 pounds. Pittsburgh with the big lead playing much more conservatively offensively in the second half. And the Boilermaker defense has done a very good job in the second half. They've allowed only one touchdown. The other one came on a pass interception. The clock continues to move a little over three minutes remaining. Third down five at the 25. Tom Brown gained about a yard. Still Before some good hitting going on in there. Williams made the tackle. So once again, the punting unit comes on for the Pitt Panthers. Northwestern trying to win their first game of the year. Woo! Get them! That's a pretty good Army team they're you, playing. I know today. it is. I'm, I'm surprised at the score. Purdue is going to go for the block here. 
John Rask on to do the kicking. Here they come, and that's the second block punt of the day. The ball down on the 12-yard line. There have been some exciting plays today. Interceptions, block punts, punts that couldn't be kicked. The guy has to run out. Fumbles. There's been a host of things. Here's a here's the block. And you'll see Fred Strickland come I mean, on to do it. I mean, everybody's in there. Look at that good block by Strickland. Purdue will take over again. We got a new quarterback, Doug Downing. So Doug Downing, Number 14. quarterback. With 214 remaining in the game and Pitt leading it by three touchdowns. What a great job today, aren't they, partner? First down, 10 yards to go from the 12. The quarterback is the junior from Lafayette, Doug Downing. Downing back to throw on first down. Lance Shad, the intended receiver, and Gary Richard is there again. Gary Richard having a fine day. Some of those people we want to we want to thank, you know, is Chancellor Wellesley Posvar and Athletic Director Dr. Ed Bozick from Pittsburgh, along with uh, SID Jim O'Brien and his assistant Linda Venzen. And of course, the people from here at Purdue have been very cooperative. We'll give you their names in a short time. Andre Janneman and Jim Richmond have checked in on the offensive line. For the Boilermakers. And some of the reserves getting a chance to play now with 209 remaining. Downing. Firing. Incompleted his rule. Tony Grant had it and couldn't hang on to it. Hit him right in the hands. Number 21, Tony Grant. Good throw by Doug Downing. We'll see this on the replay. Perfectly thrown, nicely thrown ball. Took his eye off it, hit his shoulder, went down to the ground, incomplete. Some of those people from uh, from Purdue are President Stephen Beering and Athletic Director George King, uh, PR Director Jim Brujunk. Really great to us here in West Lafayette. Third and ten. Two oh five left in the game. Downing with plenty of time. Incomplete. Ted Geloff had it hit off his hands. Wow. There have been a couple of them dropped here by the Purdue Boilermakers today. We must add two. Pittsburgh is leading 41 to 20. In case you just tuned in. Lorenzo McCline now checks in at the tailback spot, replacing Jerry Cheney. It is fourth down. Just under two minutes remaining. Boilermakers are going to go for it here. Downing back to throw. Again toward the end zone. This one is caught by Lance Shive. Touchdown. Now that was a good catch by Lance Shive. But I'm impressed with the way Doug Downing threw the ball on every play that he was in. That was dead on the target. A down and in pattern by Lance Scheib in the end zone. Back goes Doug Downing. Doug Downing throws it perfectly right in the hands of Scheib, right past the defender. And six points for the Purdue Boilermakers. They're going for two. That is the third touchdown pass of the day caught by Lance Scheib. He caught two in the first quarter from Jeff George, one for 11 yards, one for 25. This one went for 13. I like to see one thing about these Purdue Boilermakers. They haven't given up. They certainly have not. That's got to be fact, encouraging. they played a pretty good second half. They've got to be encouraging to Leon Burtnett. Going for two here on the conversion. Downing back to throw. Incomplete. Shy the intended receiver. It was broken up by Troy Washington. So the minute 55 to go. It's now 41 26. Good play by Troy Washington. Our executive producer of TNT is Don Ellis. Today's game has been produced by Rowan Backfish and directed by Michael Reardon Jr. The unit manager Irving Williams. Our associate producer Chuck Frankel. Technical director Jerry Gerard. Betsy Lawrence and Steve Williams take care of the graphics for us.
And you see the rest of the names of all of the fine people that made this telecast possible. And they didn't have an easy time of it this week with all the rain, we may add. Oh, three and three quarter inches. Those cameras don't hold up when that lightning and thunder rain comes, do they? They really had to really had to patch them up this morning to get us on the air. Great job by a great 26. crew. Without them, you and I don't do very well, do we, partner? That's right. Getting ready now for the Purdue kickoff. Pitt will get the ball back. With a minute 55 to go. We'll be up in Ann Arbor next week. Michigan playing Florida State. The onside kick attempt. Did it go far enough? I don't think so. It did not. Nope. Had to go to the 45 yard line. Good try by the Boilermakers. But now they're saying they do have the ball. Let's hold everything here. I didn't think the ball went far enough. <laughs> well, we'll find out. Well, they got a con five going. Yeah, I think it'll be Pittsburgh ball. It's got to be Pittsburgh ball. And that will be the case. The first indication the referees gave indicated that the ball belonged to Purdue and a very jubilant group of Boilermakers came <laughs> off the field. Well, they're going to come back on again. Tell you what could have happened kicking off from the 35 yard line this time. You know, referees Putney, get used to that's right. looking at that 40 yard line. That's Pittsburgh right. takes over at the spot. First down. Well, Mike Godfrey should be very, very happy with his football team here at West Lafayette. They played well defensively, intercepting five passes against Jeff George, two for touchdowns, and they really made some big plays defensively after getting behind 14 to nothing early in the first period. And Jimmy handing the ball off. Tom Brown pulls his way inside the 40 to about the 37 yard line. And the seconds begin to tick away now. A minute 43, the time left. This is interesting that uh, Mike Gottfried would leave John Conjemi in here late in this football game. You know, he's sort of the franchise of Pittsburgh, too, and uh, he's had a great game uh, against the, the hey, Purdue Boilermakers. There's number 21. Looks like he's hurt. Tony Grant, the fullback for the Purdue Boilermakers. Second down, Being about steady. seven. A minute 19 remaining. Brown again the ball carrier. He's had a good day running the ball. It gets down to the 35 yard line. Merkel Williams and Todd Tiemann making the tackle. Tiemann in there now, number 57, seeing his first action of the day. So the Pitt Panthers are going to have a record of one win, one loss, and one tie. After their first three games, the Purdue Boilermakers will be one and one. Iowa leading Northern Illinois now 43 nothing that game in the third quarter in the Iowa, Iowa will be Hawkeyes. contended with in the Big Ten. And that's where we'll be next week not at the top of that flagpole but we will be at Ann Arbor <laughs> Michigan. <laughs> You're the, a beauty kid for the Michigan Florida State game. It's just a pleasure to be here flying with you. <laughs> Although you never know this troop we may be on top of that flagpole. <laughs> There's Mike Gottfried. He did a great job of uh, defending these Purdue Boilermakers. And of course, Jeff George uh, with the five interceptions. 106, the time left. And the Panthers will have a happy trip back to Pittsburgh. They play West Virginia next week at home. Oh, that'll be a good, tough football game, too. You that know, is they... always a good one. <laughs> Third down, about four yards to go for the first down. Okay, thanks. And Jimmy handing off to Charles Gladman. Gladman gets the first down inside the 30. One thing this Pitt football team has shown us today that they can still score points even without Charles Gladman having one of those big hundred yard days. Of course, Conjemi had a good day. You know, Conjemi threw the ball well when he had to and made some big plays offensively for him. And like we had mentioned before, you know, Conjemi is uh, right now only second to a guy named Dan Marino, who was a pretty country fair football player. Marino's number, one of four numbers that have been retired by the Pitt program. Tony Dorsett's uniform jersey retired, Bill Freilich and Hugh Green. Penalty markers down. There are the retired jersey numbers for the Pitt Panthers. And all four of those men have gone on to bigger 
and better things in the NFL. Only 34 seconds remaining. Illegal delay offense. Clock starts on the snap. So the five yard penalty moves it back to the 34 yard line, first and 15. And it looks like now this Pitt Panther team will be 1 1 and 1. They got a big, tough schedule ahead of them. Purdue's schedule doesn't get any easier. They play Notre Dame next week at Notre Dame. And Jimmy just falling on it. They might get one more playoff here. Now there's a timeout called on the field. I think it was called by Purdue. So the clock will stop. And the ball now on the 37 yard line. 29 seconds. Pittsburgh leading 41 to 26. As well, we this has been our first look at this Purdue team under their new quarterback, Jeff George. What have been your impressions? He's got a long way to go. We mentioned at the beginning of the uh, of the telecast that that he had a lot of young fellas. He's only got five seniors on this football team, and uh, with a youngster like Jeff George, he's got to come along in time. They were, they'll get better as time goes along. And One thing that has really hurt has been the uh, loss of some experienced receivers: John Hayes, oh, Chris yeah. Dishman, Bruner went down today, sure. Calvin Williams. Having experienced receivers out of there is not going to help. And they don't have a great deal of speed offensively. 29 seconds left. It's second down. And Jimmy will fall on the football again. Temper, temper, boys. Wow, we had something else on the screen here, though. And you'll see the time expire. No more plays will be run. And the Pitt Panthers. Have defeated the Boilermakers from Purdue. Mike Gottfried with his first win as head football coach at Pittsburgh. He'll have plenty more with this football team. There's your final score the Pitt Panthers 41, the Purdue Boilermakers 26. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. Well, the crowd heading for home here at Ross Aid Stadium in West Lafayette. The Pitt Panthers have defeated the Purdue Boilermakers 41 26. Pitt now with a win, a loss, and a tie. Purdue goes to 1 and 1. Next week, we'll be coming to you from Ann Arbor, Michigan, as third ranked Michigan takes on number 12, Florida State. We hope you'll join us for that at 11 30 a.m. Central Time. Today's game has been brought to you in part by Bud Light, the light beer with the first name in taste. Everything else is just a light. And by the Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. We have enjoyed our stay at Ross Aid Stadium in West Lafayette, Indiana. We'll see you next week from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Along with Ron Kramer, this is Pete Van Weeren speaking to you from Ross Aid Stadium, where the final score was Pittsburgh 41, Purdue 26. So long, everyone.